Welcome to the Old World Fanatics, your Warhammer fantasy podcast to quench your hobby thirst for all things the Old World. I'm one of your hosts, Gummo, and I'm joined as usual by Andrew and Josh. How's everyone today? Good. Feeling good. Feeling good. Not. I haven't come down with a, a hobby um, sickness yet, so... Oh, oh, yes. And it feels like we have each time I've gone to a tournament. Hey, you, you, you <laughs> do that yeah. every time. <laughs> Funny that. Uh, in a room of dormant other men for... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's um, um, day, day long. Hmm. Hopefully, it's the a good weather. Are you guys getting good weather down there? Because we've we've had some awesome no. weather lately. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Shit> <laughs> so well, maybe we won't talk about. It's weather been really things. windy in a weird way, and we've had oh. we've actually had lots of trees coming down, and like large areas of the state have been without power. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, yeah. I have no idea. About <laughs> that. Watch the news. Fun to be in Victoria. <laughs> Yeah, yep. yeah, that's magic. Yep. Yeah, welcome to spring. Great, thanks. It's, Great, it's thanks. basically um, kicked in. Thanks, Southern good. Ocean. Lately, yeah, yeah. So I'm loving it. Um, <laughs> although now I'm like having to fix things. Like my, uh, I swear my dog kills my pool pump. As soon as she got in the pool for the first time, three days later the pump stopped working. Oh, even though I've got like sieve things that get her hair yeah. out and stuff, I'm like bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the perks of having that and letting your dog swim in it. But anyway, um, yeah. cool. Let's get on to it. We're, uh, we're back. We've had a bit of hot, like, I shouldn't say hobbying, but gaming. You and me, Josh, you've tournament. I got a game in, mm. had a bunch of news the last week. I think everyone's obviously aware that chaos has come out come out yeah. strong with its release uh but there's been articles that we just didn't get to cover because they came out after our pod last week so yeah. we want to go through some of them as well as cover some Absolutely. of these games and stuff so it should be a, a pretty good episode and yeah, better make the most of this news because i suspect there won't be that much more well that's a part coming, of it too yeah i did a live stream a winter <laughs> <of news. laughs> <laughs> I think it's through it. down as soon as I hang up, that roadmap thing came out. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, anyway, we'll yeah. cover that as well. So, you know, if you guys only listen to the podcast and don't follow a lot of other stuff, it's hopefully a lot of new stuff. But otherwise, um, if you have, if you follow all the old world news around, it's probably just us, our viewpoints on it all because it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, we're sort of catching up a little bit because it just, there was so much last week. Um, Anyway, before we kick off, we better just give our shout outs to our patrons like oh, yeah. uh, usual. These awesome folks help us deliver Old World Fanatics week in and week out. So if you'd like to help, please head over to patreon.com slash Old World Fanatics. We've got a few tiers over there ranging uh, for just supporting us, like getting a private Discord channel, but also uh, some other bonus stuff that you can get, like access to early shows and, and jumping on our podcast and things like that. Now, also, I just wanted to clarify because we've got a question about this. The Discord channel is a private channel on the Australian Discord Warhammer Old World group. And I, yes, we sort of helped organise that, but it's technically that old, that Discord, uh, what do you call it? Discord server is not mm. Old World Fanatic server. It's actually bigger than that. Um, we've just got, obviously we have admin rights and all that. So we've got our own little private areas on there. So you get access to that. So I know that's sometimes confused a few patrons because they thought there might be another Discord server to join but there's not so that's uh, easy but hopefully yeah not too confusing um likewise the australian warhammer facebook group for those who don't know it was actually started by us um and took off and then we were debating renaming it to old world fanatics facebook group but then it got too big so we left it as warhammer australia old world and i think i don't know have anyone checked are we bigger than the warhammer fantasy facebook oh, the fantasy australia, australia one? facebook we were, yeah, I remember, I remember. We, oh, did we go we, over yeah, them? Oh, okay. I didn't, like, we didn't mean to, it just, like, we just did a uh, literal one. Cause I remember there was some dramas scanning. at the start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People were saying rename it, and yeah, yeah. anyway, we didn't, and it, it is what it is. And it's good, because I think there's other, as you, as Josh will attest to, there's, people are still playing Warhammer 6th and 8th and all that, so it's good to have mm, everyone have yeah. their own little homes and stuff. So. Mm. Yeah, anyway. So anyway, I want to just yep. clarify that because a few questions came out of that. But anyway, if you are a patron, you get a few shout outs um, every episode. And we have two new ones, which I believe I know both. I think I think I got this right. If I don't, uh, terribly sorry. Um, but Edward Fawcett, I'm assuming that is Ed, who I did the video with last week on the Chaos uh, General, sort of the normal Ravening Hordes Chaos List, who runs Close Order Podcast. I'm assuming that's mm. him, Ed. So if you're listening and it's not you, let me know, because I feel sorry for the Ed that I just 
misidentified. But anyway, Ed joined and Cameron White, who uh, I had a, a great game of Warhammer with on the weekend, has joined as well. So a big thank you, guys. Um, oh, you're, you're of, playing him and he's now a Patreon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Heaps good, hey. So, yeah, Cam's uh, joined we should, up. We should be playing good. more more regularly with other random people and hopefully um, we'll get He has signed up to the 2D6 hey? Battle Report strategy. and Hobby Hour tier, so I think he's sort of prodding to Ooh. go, you know, more content, more gaming, more blah, blah. Yeah. So we need to get into that. Nice. It's just been a bit busy and we're trying to work this stuff out, but juggling things. Uh, but, yeah, all the other guys, so James McClellan, Liam Fallon, Tommy Coblin, jo Joseph Justice, Jay McBride, Flat World's Edge, Sex slash Jim Wallace, <laughs> Jelly, Herald of the Old World, Keel Hurd, David Lancaster, Tom, Matthew Klein, Thumper, Matt Morris, Thomas Vavasau, Griff, Jess Tours, Wood Duck, Josh Griffiths, Nananawim, Daniel Broadstock, Jonathan Wengler, Elliot Mitchum, Chris Turnbull, Gilthos Drakonos, which I will on to show. Remind me, I've got some cool pics of stuff that he's been painting and I keep forgetting they to bring up, cool. so I want to show some of those. Yeah, they Diesel, are really Cameron cool. Atkinson, uh, Richard slash Danny Gamer, William Payne, Robert Z, Mudling Fudge Whistle. Mudling? Mudlung. Mudlung? Fudge Whistle. <laughs> That's fudge a picture whistle. of a young kid uh, with maybe mm. orange hair. I don't know. In, I don't yeah, know in some distress. He looks, yeah. he looks uh, a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> Andrew Harris, Bobby Gurkin, <laughs> Gumwich, Sean Ritchie, Todd Lloyd, and Chapstick. Big thank you. I think that's up to 40 um, paid patrons. So big thank you. It nice. really helps. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Big thank you. If you don't want to, you don't need to join, uh, you can just jump over to YouTube as well and hit the like, subscribe buttons. We really appreciate that. But uh, apart from that, we also ask patrons every week yeah. on their private little channel that we've got going on our Discord Ooh. questions. Private. Who wants to run through some of them? Oh, um, let me bring it up. Yeah, we already answered that oh, one. Are you bringing it up or are you? Do you mean do it? Oh, oh no, 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 no. Bring it I up. Just bring it up. Yep. I'm just getting um, it ready on my phone. All right. Ah, uh, the first question is great. Tommy oh. Dogs asks Is the podcast intro outro music a recording of Gomo shredding on one of those guitars <laughs> you see in the background of the videos? <laughs> Uh, no, unfortunately, yes. Not for, I, I'm, I do play mostly you do acoustic, with those? you can't actually see the acoustic here. It's right here. Um, oh. I play acoustic. Hey, you've got I another don't... guitar. Oh, God. I've got five here. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's four on the wall and one over on the floor over here. Um, but no, it's not. Yeah, I don't play as much as I would like. That's it, Especially when things like Old World came out, you're sort of like, hmm, no, I'd rather throw dice. You've only got time for one hobby in your life, yeah. eh? The good thing with my music, and I think everyone, hopefully, uh, if you struggle with, uh, you know, things like trying to get feel guilty about not doing hobbies, they're always there. So, you know, you can come back to them different times of life and you jump back into them. You don't always have to do them. You know, same as Warhammer. I see a lot of people, mm. when they have young kids, they sort of go, oh, I don't get time to do my hobby. And it's like... It's okay to take a break. It's okay. Mm. It will be there. You know, it's, it's, yeah. that's why it's called a hobby. So, yeah, yeah but that's good advice. A little yeah. bit of uh, advice there. But yes, uh, no, that's not me playing, unfortunately. Maybe one day, maybe I'll come up with something and we'll replace our theme song. <laughs> oh, I look forward to that. <laughs> that would be good. I should go on this music video. <laughs> How many Patreons do we need to get before you um, <laughs> yeah. get to do that? 100. <laughs> 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys, get on it. Uh, right, next one, uh, what? Plasmon, I think, yep. is yep. Uh, for a fairly casual player. Um, could you explain the appeal of items like Luxstone or Charm Shielder? Yes, they're cheap, but uh, single use seems extremely case specific to use. Can having a chance to negate a single wound once really be that important? I suppose if your midi Oka hero fights another hero. The challenge um, turn two, then with low wounds attacks, a single wound could make all the difference. But it just seems like a bad value uh, proposition at a glance. Uh, Do you want to just general... stop there and we'll just answer that one and then we'll mm. answer the next bit? Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. What do you guys think of that one? I oh. think because you get a bit of a discount because you're not paying for a shield. So sometimes it's like even cheaper. Is the, is the the charm shield the five, is that the five point one five up ward? Uh, was it ten? Only. So can't remember because there's two five. cheap shields. One's five, one's ten. Oh, is it? Yeah, enchanted and charmed. Um, yeah, enchanted and charmed. But yeah, yeah one's five. Yeah, so. but one's almost free because the shield's usually what three mm. points for a hero. So I think know. so. I had a, I did 
my view on this was um because sometimes i think like that too it's like oh god you know why, why bother obviously i mean there's two things that came to mind for me one was obviously if you you know when you're trying to eke out five points or you got 10 points left you mm. just throw stuff on things so there's obviously that's you know it's the first thing to go but it's the last yeah, thing to add on like yeah that's cool um the other thing though i think that's where you might see some i guess there's a difference between when you play one off game versus a tournament, which might be five games. I think those little items potentially could make a difference. And because they're so cheap, it doesn't matter. So, for example, Charm Shield's five points. If you have five games to use it, you probably find it might have helped in one of those games. And then in that case, it only cost 25 points over the whole tournament and it was worth it. Um, versus sometimes you go and spend 100 points or something, 100, what, say 70 points on some expensive banner and it doesn't do crap for five games that's a massive waste of points because there's like 300 something points that you've spent you know what i mean like if your time's by mm. five um so i think there's a that could be a different way to look at it um yeah yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's actually really interesting what you say andrew about yeah the efficiency of you're not having to pay for a shield anyway because that that's actually then changes um, yeah. yeah it's to give me two or three points so that actually yeah. changes the mass even more um, because essentially you're only paying two points for a one in three chance of not losing. Like, yeah, the Charm Shield yeah, is five points, the Charm Shield's ten. Um, and yeah, the Charm Shield's a five, one off five off ward save. So one in three games, you actually are going to end up with an extra wound so you I, might have otherwise I, lost. Yeah, good examples. I actually put that on my Empire Captain General this weekend because he was only in there for Leadership 9. I didn't want to spend many points on him. He had a charm shield and the dragon bow. He happened to get in a challenge with the duke, and he didn't die. Uh, and you know they ran away and died the next turn. But uh, the charm Don't shield helped because it was a five up ward save, so yeah. he didn't f totally get minced in one go. Um, yeah. So that actually helped. But again, it's so it's very specific to what you're trying to do. You know, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I mean it's only against a single wound anyway. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, did it keep him alive though? Like, did you, is that a war save you otherwise? Did you save a wound? Yeah, I saved, yeah, at least saved one of the wounds on that one. Yeah. Plus, I think he took a, a wound normally, but you know, he probably got, say, two through and I ended up warding one of them or whatever with that. Oh, uh, I see. Or maybe I see. he got three through and I warded one or something. I can't remember what it was, but um, that one did That's help. Not bad for five points. Yeah. 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 Just to keep him alive one bit, but didn't really help in the end, but still. Yeah. 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 Those cheap little items can be worthwhile for sure. And be good. Mm. Um, now, what's the second half of that? Um, oh, good. Sorry, I just completely question. left it. Um, no, sorry, and in it. general, as a casual player, could you talk about selecting magic items in general? I understand from a competitive point of view that they're all about pieces to solve a specific puzzle. But as a casual or narrative players, should we simply try to view them as purchasing special characteristics to define our own mm. special characters oh that's free yeah that's i cool. like that mm. i like that mm. uh i mean obviously i'll admit i don't do that um because i haven't played a lot of narrative with the old world yet um but i think that's an awesome reason <laughs> yeah <laughs> picking yeah it's almost like the whole game was designed yeah. for that precise purpose <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but we never do Save that. that yeah D definitely do what you want I, I think that's kind of like the question but he's kind of like saying for casual play i think for casual play it is good to have a bit of fluff in there um if you're not going to go down the tournament route like you're not casual playing as like a lead up to tournament if you're just yeah. casual playing for a bit of fun definitely that fluffy context is is awesome and it's great when you got fluff and like the fluff kind of pans out so like you might have this crazy character who's like you know like a little goblin on a spider rider take out something that's worth heaps of points like you know mm, like yeah just, yeah it's it's but awesome it's like, that little sort of yeah and like it. an orc i mean if you're an orc if you're playing narratively orc's got to take the big choppiest chopper on stuff on that because yeah. like, he has to have it <laughs> yeah, yeah like i think it's yeah the, what do you guys think about the idea i think val brought it up val half a finger brought it up ages ago and I, I think i talked to ed about this last week on the chaos review um that he was saying he wants to see a tournament where you have to take the biggest magic item like weapon and uh, like usually the weapon because usually there's usually like some 80 or 100 point weapon yeah, that's yeah. just crap it does one thing and it's overpriced and it's like not nah, every yeah. you have to take that 
Um, I think that'd be pretty funny. Just like every yeah, army has to take this. You know, maybe the TO's got to like go it. through and yeah. say these items are the ones that never get used, but they're funny and they're and yeah. you have to put it in your list. <laughs> I think that'd be hilarious. I'd like to see a few more scrolls of transmogrification around. Yeah, well, that's Before right. We yeah, never see yeah. them. No, I only played one. That was Fury played it the other day, you know, against me. Just I think he took it out for Castle Assault, but it was funny. It's nerve-wrenching once when you're rolling that one dice to see if you're going to turn into a frog. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, frog riding a dragon. Fours. <laughs> yeah. Little on a problem to turn him into a frog. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to get that um, next one? Yeah. Uh, Miss Junk asks, um, and I have sort of a bit of time speaking about this since I saw this question. What rule change from the old world would you like to see go back into eighth edition? So, something that was added to the mm. old world. Yeah. To be honest, I struggled. So, what did you come up with then, Josh? I mean, it depends on how she means this question. Do you mean? Do, do you think she means? on oh, no, it's a rule change. So she phrased that as rule change from the old world. Um, there's so much. Probably no steadfast. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was a big one. Um, or change it no. to like a similar to. I was thinking like um, the stubborn rule now, where it's kind of like a single use only mm. thing. Mm. So it's not it's not like a as valuable. You just can't stick yeah. around forever. Or you can lose it with flanking if you're disrupted, maybe like that type of thing. I like think so, well, was that always a oh, thing, but you were disrupted. I think from eighth anyway. Uh, uh, I've in, got one. In ninth ed it was, but in eighth, if you got flanked, oh, it was too fast. Yeah. In ninth Ooh. they put it in. There you go. Oh, I can't see I keep getting mixed it's up. Too many yeah. systems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was an awesome. That, yeah, that that was definitely good. Losing um, steadfast slash stubborn. Yeah, there's definitely stuff I'd bring back in from eighth as well. Just little things, just uh, quality of. Life yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Like there was actually like various things. I mean, I'm waiting for you to bring up charging. Ah. <laughs> I'm well, if you that's bring the up bit I would bring the other way wheeling. in terms of just not wheeling. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I don't know how you fix. Are. I think there would be a risk to wheeling. do it straight eighth edition though too i think you'd have to come up with some absolutely potential. like yeah the, the less random charges i think is also an awesome change yes from totally yeah yeah um, that's right uh yeah. I, you know so because it just makes it you know, less, less slightly ridiculous mm. um i thought no step up was good as well um i mean i thought about that but i thought is initiative. that like hard to do with the way the hordes and like with that i don't know it'd be interesting to play mm. a game we just take it out and see what happens. But and just see yeah. what happens. Mm. Yeah, true. I mean, because there's no benefit to charging, isn't there? So that's why it works. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So so it's it starts to get too complicated. Like yeah. It, so like you drag one rule and you got to drag more. Yeah. The question is: Is this a, a a topic where we're talking about? We could you can may only pick one rule and then mm. <laughs> you can't yeah. change anything else. <laughs> I did think though. I reckon the whole difficult terrain and how it affects charges, which again, I guess it's a bit different in eighth, but the fact that I think I think they've hit on something pretty interesting with the forests and rules and like it feels mm. like terrain can play a part it doesn't kill you like it does in six but eighth just it didn't make a difference yeah mm. that's so true that's a good point yeah the terrain um movement modifiers are pretty yeah pretty well balanced mm. in the old world yeah it is um, it's good. whereas eight, eighth you just blew through forests and stuff didn't matter well yeah yeah um in six one thing just... yeah one thing i felt i was thinking about magic um you know if i mean Eighth magic was awful, but I think it was mainly because of spells. Like, I wonder how it would feel playing that magic system, but with spells mm. of the power level of and the dice. old world. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Because it was kind of cool. Like, level twos were usable in that context because you had a mm. fixed amount of dice to use. Yep. You sort of had a bit of reward for having multiple casters because you could channel things and, like, that would actually help to get more dice a little bit. Um, and level fours weren't really that dominant. So... Yeah, I, I, I didn't mind the 2d6 sort of things mm. and magic stuff, but it was just yeah, in the context like, of six dicing it. everything. It was, yeah. Yeah, and I think the other issue spells. is when do you get those? Do you, I guess you generate your dice at the beginning of your turn and just use it throughout the, the turn. 
Oh, in the anything. context of the old world, yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying to oh, plug sorry, it into the, the old way. world. Hang on, you're going the other like, way. You're saying like, take the spells, you... yes, from old world. Yeah, that's more what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah take the spells through. Um, yeah. I, I like how um, Always Strikes First was really toned down as well from the 8th because mm-hmm. that was that was pretty uh, pretty overpowered, um, yeah. I would yeah. say, whereas they've got a nice balance, I think, where it is still quite strong, but there are sort of play plays you can you can get around it or it only lasts for the first turn or whatever so yeah it still yeah. All comes down to initiative yeah no it's good that initiative's big again I like what did it. you think about fear um in those two editions like because fear i, I found I wasn't that fear from six really like that breaking them if you <laughs> oh yeah yeah i'm trying to keep it on eighth in the old world player. because we i haven't we haven't really talked about the differences in eighth in the old world like because yeah i i think six six probably was maybe marginally well, not marginally the auto breaking was too powerful it was, yes. but, it was perfectly balanced yeah. <laughs> 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 so it was charging in magic phases that was fun yeah. um yeah Hang on, so remind me on what the eight fear thing was, because I feel like the fear in eight thing was better. Was like the punishment took you down was weapon better. Skill one was it? Yeah, you just took a little fear check every round, and you just went level two one. So it didn't matter if you were charging or not. You didn't have to take a chest before charging, or if you got charged. And there was you no take, unit strength. You just take a check if you're in combat. It. Yeah, no unit strength. Just always take it if you fail. You go to one, but BSBs you could re-roll it. So yeah, 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 yeah true. You often. I actually, probably matter. like that a bit um because i feel like right now sometimes it's actually hard to um it's just there's not a bit many big units so you, sometimes you're not yeah. even like like fearing anything like you fear it but you don't like you're not outnumbering them so they don't take it yeah it seems yeah. it feels a bit irrelevant and then you forget it even exists after a yeah. while because you're yeah. so rarely checking for fear um yeah good point i like the terror better because i like the fact that you charge, you've got to take a terror. And I also like that when you're in combat, it's minus one leadership. I love those things, like when you're that it's debuffing the leadership. It's interesting yeah. that you don't have to take a, a terror check to charge a terror yeah. causing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Enemy, yeah that's which weird. I think is yeah. bizarre. Yeah. Because I feel like it should go both ways. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I think I think the fear in the eighth head wasn't too bad, but I feel like it was actually the BSB that was causing a problem that was True. making it really un- irrelevant. Because everyone yeah, was nah. re-rolling, and then yep. it's just like you know, just... maybe that's and what, then it gets to the, the point that it was. Bring. You know, yeah. Scrap, well, yeah. Make the BSB just do breaks and stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. BSB, I reckon, should be breaker. I think yeah, the old world you can do panic. Yeah. But not other psychology. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I reckon the BSB, given the plus one and rerolling breaks, is enough of an, a good effect. Like in six, you don't even get the extra plus one. It's just, no, it's, it, that's right. <laughs> in seventh, you do, but in six, you just get the. So you're only really getting rerolls, which mm. isn't enough to justify it. But if you just had the plus one as well, I feel like that'd be a good balance. Mm. Anyway, I think we've spent quite a bit on this. <laughs> Shall we move on? <laughs> um, uh, you threw one oh, of my ones in. Anyone. <laughs> Gomo asks, anyone <laughs> knows some good STL base hoppers that suit Empire? I've seen the Sixali range, but I'm after something a bit dirty, rocky, meadowy, not just all rocks and timber. Who's this yeah, Gomo I'm... fellow? Yeah. Because <laughs> <I was> just... <laughs> now I'm totally at a hobby weird. I don't know what I'm doing at the moment because I feel like I've got to get my orcs rebased. I need to get... And now I played the Empire on the weekend. I wouldn't mind getting them done, but I just don't want to go back. I want to find a quicker way to do basing. That wasn't my old <laughs> sand method. And so one of the options with the dwarfs I've played around with, which I like, is a wet mud with some snow on it and it's just done. But I don't want to do wet mud for all of it. I want to have different variants. And then I saw those, you know, cool bases and base toppers. But they seem like they're they're just, they're a style and that's all you get. So, for example, like that, however you say it, the Zali range. They got like, I I was asking you guys about dwarf gold ones, gold coins. They've got a gold coin one. That's all gold coins. But the whole floor's gold coins. Like if you yeah, have an yeah, entire yeah. army of that, it's yeah, yeah. It's it's too all, much. And then That's like those much. wooden, like I've seen an, an army of it, like the piratey type themed empire, yeah. where they're all on those sort of like ship looking board things. Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot of options, but they're just it's just all one thing. I feel like can't you just find one that's a bit more normal? <laughs> you know, and you throw a few tuffs on it, and it's done. Um, yeah. 
but I, I don't know. I, that's why I reached out to see what people if they if they know of any, especially obviously STL toppers that are the thirty by thirties and the sixty, like all the ones you need for for um, old world. Um, you know, without having to rescale stuff. So I don't know. That was Men- Menzies got back to you, didn't he? Did you have a look at that? He did. I had a look into that, but then I couldn't find square ones, or there were square ones. There was a oh, couple. Okay. I don't know. I have oh, to, that was on my phone, so I'm going to have to dig in on the actual. Sometimes yeah. I find my manufacturing, uh, my yeah, manufacturing goes a bit slow on the phone, so I might just have a look on yeah, I desktop do, and see. I do like um, Mr. Crates on uh, Cults. Um, he's oh, got 3D Cults. Oh, okay, I don't really Cult 3D, yeah. Yeah, Cult 3D, um, yeah. So yeah. Mr. Crates, he's got a good selection of a v- wide variety of different textures. And okay. he, ha- does, he does bases and toppers often in the same file. Um, oh, I might, I might have a look see at that if I can. Okay. So it's it's definitely worth looking at. It's usually what I use, to be quite honest. Yeah. I, I, can, I mean, the um, other alternative is just to, you know, go the whole textured paint, but find some good ones that I like with maybe throwing a bit of rocks in there initially and yeah, then just texture it paint around it let it dry and then and then i want a texture paint that i can either leave mm. or just one wash of dark stuff on it and then cover it with some mm. you know a little bit of flock and different stuff and then maybe a tuft here and then done so i just want to get back i don't want to go i want to try if i'm going to do that then i will rebase stuff i'll go good rip it all off go back to that and not be sanding and then washing like dry brushing like you know the base takes like 50 hours to do um yeah that's that's the mr Co- mr crate stuff okay um so yeah quite a wide variety of different textures um, yeah i might have a look at that having said that yeah that's uh i like the rocky Zali Zali range stuff. has a great demon one with like crystals and stuff i'm going to use that and they've got a good chaos one i just didn't find something that was a bit more just normal you know they've got forests which are great but i'd use them for elves rather than empire just i want something a bit better with you. yeah just give me some normal battlefield you know <laughs> Yeah, subtle, yeah, yeah. I know stuff. exactly what you say. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So that, that's a great business idea, right there. Just a, a normal yeah. battlefield, normal sort of like Yeah, and the odd dead thing on it or something. Ruins, or, you know. yeah, yeah, skull here and there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I'll read the next one because this is actually Cam uh, said thoughts on battle because we actually talked about this uh, in our battle. Thoughts on battle points versus most wins for deciding tournaments. Moab and this is relevant to you, Andrew. Moab's running uh, 2250 points and no special characters. What are your feelings towards this change? Because special characters are fairly key to running some of the new arcane journals and they also just don't seem as broken as the old special characters. So there's actually sort of two questions in there. Mm. Um, what do you guys think about... So the, just to clarify, the battle points is like that 20 nil system versus uh, win-loss draw type thing. Um, actually, this... yeah. No, Sorry? you go. I was going to say, I do like the most wins thing. I've almost always, and you guys probably as well, i am really always only ever really played the battle point system. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, some, sometimes that results in some weird sort of situations, um, especially in the, in the top tables mm. where people are like playing for draws and stuff because they know they've got so many points, you know? Whereas yep. if you just have to win each game, it doesn't matter if you get smashed, you just lost. But you're gonna know, you just go up and try again, you yeah. know, like you just you just yeah. win loss, win loss. Um, yep. and then using puts points as a as a tiebreaker, I think. Yeah, well think you probably yeah, should we be just, looking to Yeah, go did that we way. just go down the wrong like Rob and Val talked about this a couple of weeks ago on Squarebase and it seemed like by the sound of it, because Rob in his ones, they always win loss draw. He doesn't even give trophies for first place. You basically get um or do you get trophies? I can't remember. You basically get, you don't win the tournament, but you get it, you acknowledge because you undefeat it. So if you go five zip, you get, I don't know if they're t- trophies, they might be, but you don't get one. There's not one winner. It's basically your goal is to try go five zip and they're the ones that get sort of rewarded. Um, but there's not like a overall winner, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. And he was saying that, I think he was mentioning that the US was a 20 zip system as well. And for some reason it's just went a different way and i and it's the first time i realized and then cam brought it up and then i'm like oh yeah i don't know maybe australia just went down the 20 nil system in eights and we just stay there i i don't know i i'm not against the most wins thing i think it's kind of cool because you don't have to play for those yeah ridiculous like smashings or yeah. um you yeah. know you can be yeah i think sometimes I mean, a bit more tactical yeah it it can go either way though because then you've also got then situation where 
certain armies that are quite avoidancy, like Wood Elves, that often mm. can win reliably in a minor small. way. Yeah. 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 Small every time, end up potentially, you know, in a in a quite a good position in that regard if all I have to do is yeah, win small true. each game. Yep. And just like minimal minimize contact, but just take off a few points and then push through the win. Um, yep. so, I mean, can you expand that a little bit and do the actual real like, you know, win loss draw, but like big win, big loss, like in a five five levels Like as or in the, the old know? six ed table of minor win, yeah, solid <laughs> win massacre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, Which is where you turn returning back to yeah. <laughs> Well, then it ends up going on 20. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah. See, no, I, I think, I think that's probably a good way because that way you get a ceiling effect of, you know, yeah, it's zero, it's three, it's a three system, really. Well, three to mm. zero system, then, really. You've yeah. One, one, zero, one minus one, that kind of thing. No, I'm just laughing because it's ironic yeah. that we're now talking about a system that was first written 20 years ago and suddenly like oh maybe we should be going back to that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, got back to it. <laughs> yeah, but if I guess if TOs are, I mean, you know, people who are it's, starting to TO and do stuff idea. for old world, maybe we should play around with it a bit more and not just get stuck in the. Yeah, old maybe it's the best thing. of both worlds not to have mm. so, not to have twenty, but to have like yeah five or less as the ceiling, and that way, that way the whole thing is is a tighter band. Maybe yeah, oh, you get right. less variance from. Hmm. What about the other question though? He thought. said about the special characters. Um and that mole is running twenty two fifty. I guess Andrew's the only one to go on mole up here. Um so how's that playing in to mm. I mean special characters doesn't affect you because you're taking are you well hang on, what are you taking? Oh, you're taking uh, high elves. High, high elves. Yeah, okay, so it doesn't affect you at the moment. I haven't played um, the game with him yet, but I'm yeah. taking So it's the twenty two fifty I guess you don't know then because you haven't really played two thousand points of high elves yet either. Nah, nah. Well, uh, you kind of work it out pretty quick. Like it just it gives you the ability, I think, to take a few more toys. Um, but at the same time, the more points you get, the bigger your character allowance. So you yeah, kind yeah. of can start yeah. taking the piss a bit with characters. Um, but I, I don't know. We'll see how um, the guys, because I think it's Matt and oh, was it Jeremy? I think the other to. Um, sorry, I forgot that wrong. Um, they they said they were going to go through the list and they want something that's fun to bring. But ah, uh, okay, mean, so they'll do some to what, like sort of what cast maybe, a little bit. Maybe they will. I think people sometimes just put that in just to you know. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see how much. I might have a chat to him after it's all done and see if he's actually had to do some resubmits. Yeah. Um, but as, as to the other point, yeah, I, I don't think any. Um, I think the the question is pretty valid. Like, there's no sort of characters at the moment that are really overbearing and powerful. Um, it, I think it's just something that a lot of TOs are doing. It's just like no special yeah, characters. I, it just seems I to think be they should blanket. scrap that. I reckon it's part of the game. They should leave them in. I think mercenaries should be in because I think it's pretty much old world. I, at least every book coming out seems to be leveraging that now. And I think by the time yeah. it's all out, it's going to be a major component. I'm okay with banning allies. Um, yeah. Cause they're just not thematic that much more so than anything else. Like I think. Yeah. So, but oh yeah, again, not that our voice is worth anything. And if we want to run a tournament, we can run our own tournament. But I just think like, yeah, let special characters in, let mercenaries in and just, you know, I don't know. Well, the special character has been allowed for most of the tournaments that I've been aware of so totally. far. Yeah. I think it's the first one that I've heard that it hasn't been, um, to be honest. Yeah, I'd, um, I'd rather tournament, uh, like, people get to the point where they maybe ban a particular special character if one becomes, like, stupid rather yeah. than just wipe them out. Yeah. I thought a, f a few of the ones I've actually read have said no special character. Oh, I thought that has been a thing, but oh, I, okay. I could be wrong. But. I don't think I don't think uh, I can't remember. yeah, I don't know. Because did Shirecon have special characters when you guys went to Shirecon? Like was it Shirecon? Or which one was it? That that Sydney uh, oh, one Shirecon you guys went had to? I don't think had oh, any. I didn't go. Um, but that was when oh. it just came out. Yeah. Oh okay, I didn't. Yeah, okay. All right. Because Gathering Darkness that I went to did. Castle did, obviously. Um What did allow them, you mean? Yeah, it did. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Kendall let everything through and we weren't even sure if that was... I think he might have been... There was rumours he probably did 
he forgot it. Like, because you could take allies and everything. It wasn't even in there that you couldn't. Oh, right. It's just that yeah. I think it's so funny. We're just so accustomed, at least most of the people playing now, because they come from eights, that they're just accustomed to not being able to take them. So they don't take yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Um, it could just be a, a hangover from, you know, yeah, like I think the it earlier. Is. Yeah. Is. I'm excited uh, sorry, to think that we don't, we wake up from that and we don't, and we just play mostly what, what you're allowed to play. And then, yeah. um, but again, that's my opinion. I'm not saying if like, I mean, geez, if you're running a tournament, you can do what you want. Like you're the, you're oh, doing the work, yeah. you know, like, yeah. It's the same yeah. for everyone then. Like it's the same rules, isn't it? It's not really like anyone's getting yeah, a, it doesn't matter. a yeah. major yeah. advantage or anything either way. And I can I'm understand sure was... people doing it now where that all the armies aren't out. Like I can understand that a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But then, then they're getting other advantages from the arcane journals anyway. But you don't, yeah, you don't want to cut that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, I wish there was some way of getting doing running the two two, you know, twenty twenty two hundred and fifty points, while not letting more character points in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, just forcing it yeah. to be spent on troops. Um, yeah. yeah, maybe someone needs to do them. You know, who was it, Ben or someone? Um, uh, like the Belcon Ben was talking about, oh, was it him? I can't remember. You know, like talking about like maybe doing a, you know, I don't know, 75%. Sorry, hang on. What's characters now? Uh, 50. 50. So 50, doing like yeah. a 40% or something like that, some different number. I think, I think someone said 35. Yeah. Like it'd be cool to like do just do the maths of, okay, well, if it's 40. Let forty still be what it is now, so five hundred points, and then what's you know what's that? What's ten percent more? So it's about twenty two fifty probably, but you leave characters at forty percent, yeah. you know, which would be around that five hundred. Forty five percent, yeah, that'd be around on the thousand or so, yeah, or forty percent would be nine hundred, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that'd be interesting. I think that's doable, yeah, because I think people keep asking for like thirty three percent on the Facebook, so I feel like that yeah. might be a little bit. That's, that's probably too restrictive, but yeah. Around forty, so just under that, I think would be, yeah, would be sweet. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow. You can still have your dragon, but you're not going to have this kitted up frigging. Yeah. And and sometimes you're not even. This is the thing. So I mean, I guess some armies can spam, like night goblins and, and empire can spam a lot of you know level fours and stuff. But um, I think the big issues are those big characters. They're not like more characters aren't the problem. If you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, like if everyone's yeah. taking more little characters and support characters, I think it's kind of interesting. Like I'd like to see, like for example, I'd like to see more Necrotex in Tomb King armies and, um, you know, whatever, and engineers in dwarfs and empire armies, and and I want to see some. What is it? Way way stalkers and stuff in whatever. Like cool. you want to see some yeah. of those characters, and you don't see them yeah. because why would you? When I'd rather just take a massive guy and a dragon and a level four. And, but there's yeah, my exactly. character you allowance, it up. allowance gone. Kit it up, drag and, and kit it up level yeah. four. Yeah, and that's, a BSB yep. maybe, and so that's got no therein lies left. the problem, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. that's that's really the problem. Yeah, not mm. the um. So the other option is you somehow go, well, you can't do more than I don't know. That's hard to do, but like four hundred points on a single character or something, you know, something like that. You know, I don't know, but yeah, I, I, I mean, guess, you know, the thing is, apparently dragons aren't really a problem if you take a couple of cannons. You'll be fine. <laughs> we'll get to that's a good segue. We <laughs> well, but I just quickly on that though. It's I it's I what Andrew and I said the other day on our other podcast, Post Castle, is I is the dragon the problem or is it the fucking ogre blade? <laughs> it's like everyone yeah. who wins yeah. tournaments, they're all got ogre blades. So yeah. I don't know if the dragon is the actual problem. I have never played in a <laughs> version of Warhammer that has such a mon mon monopoly of a single magic weapon across the yeah. board. I'd almost ban that before I banned everything yeah. else just to shake up the meta. No ogre blades. Although that, yeah. that, 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 you know, that is a counter to a dragon, so that's the only yeah, problem. Yeah. But, you know, like, there was yeah. no mention of that. Uh, there was no mention yeah. of that, just cannons. It because <clears throat> yeah. yeah, it, yeah. it is very different having so many common magic items whereas the previous editions it'd be you've got 10 mm. magic items that are common you know yeah four yeah. of those are weapons and that's it and there are none of them are more than about 25 points mm. um is is that an issue that everyone's got access to all these you know high high value weapons and some of them are really good and it's just you just pick it yeah. because it is really good yeah yeah um, Anyway, that, well, let's segue that into that then a little bit. I mean, we'll, we'll get to it. Do you want to um, we'll go quickly into these news articles? Yeah, let's um, go into just some news. 
in general. I'll I'll try bring him up and we had a bunch. We had um and because we so had a many. bunch, I'm not really prepared to know what was in each article now. <laughs> we no, don't want to yeah, totally I can't go over I don't want to read it. You know, no, no, no. We're not, but it was so four days ago. I can't remember. I, oh, it was mm. though, wasn't it? Yeah. So we had like at least <laughs> three that we have not covered. So ones, this one, I think one. I don't even know. If I've got these in order, but I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, one of them is just sort of the whole intro to. Oh yeah. To the chaos. That was know? the beginning. Um, I love the art. It's so good. Oh yeah. I actually it's do like, like that um, picture from the Arcane Journal too, which I haven't really got a good picture of. Full um, old school. Yeah. Actually, some of the podcasts that are out there, they're, they're, I mean, technically they're probably big and ass, are getting free stuff. So I am going to go back to a mission to try and start emailing yeah. Games Workshop again. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me to do it. I keep forgetting. But um, this is the interesting, like, what do you guys think about this whole, um, I kind of find it, find it funny that they're comparing it to Horace Heresy, but... Um, Mm. Yeah, that chaos is definitely yes. weaker in this like, time what's, period, what's, and yeah, it's like Horace what, Heresy what is, got to do got with to this. Do with this? I, know, I don't know. Like, there's people who probably have never even read that. Like, the fuck? What are you bringing yeah. this shit up for? There's some other yeah. random game. That's not relevant. Yeah. <laughs> <No way. laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, like I, I like. Uh, well, I, I don't say. I mean, I've got no issue either way. But it is interesting they're trying to sort of set it in a different different time where they're weaker, and also that there's no. Sent, there's no mono, it's very less mono uh, god, if you know what I mean. It's mostly chaos undivided. Um, so you do have these hints of the the gods that are out there, but they call them different things and stuff like that. I, I, again, I don't know if this is the exact article that talks about it, but like mm. corn's not really mentioned is, as yeah. being corn, you know what I mean? It's, 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 I can't remember. Whispers what it was. in the wind. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like it. Um, yeah. It's, I can see they've got a lot of narrative stuff that they can expand on that down the track. You know. Yeah, I mean? it's a pretty strong narrative um, reasoning yeah. for why they're doing the way they're doing it. Yeah. Mm. Chaos is that... waning. Yeah. Um, yeah, they go through all that whole... Um... Oh, again, I'm not right up on Chaos, but yeah, this whole ever-chosen stuff and what numbers they are and stuff. Um, but yeah, was there anything else in this article that uh, we need to talk about? What was Danny talking about? Um, they're talking about all these dudes that are rocking up and there's no big yeah. character yet, but there will be. Um, yeah. And they've just got these lieutenants and one of them's this girl, Friedel, the chain maker, yeah. um, which is in one of the books. Very uh, Norse book. name. Yeah. Mm. Um, she looks pretty good, actually. So, yeah. And she's yep. got a perfect AOS character, so you know you just buy a, an AOS character and put it on square base almost, and you've got her. So <laughs> it looks pretty close anyway. Um, yep. And then yeah, they, I mean they talk about yeah, so she's coming back, and then Gaul Rock, the Great Drake. I, I mean this is stuff in the a Arcane Journal. So just so you guys know, we will review the Arcane Journal probably soonish actually, even though we don't actually have it. We've got the crappy derpy pictures, so we might do that. So I don't want to go fully into that. Um, but yeah, they're just, you know, they're just going through, yes. I guess, that sort of idea that there's all these little lieutenants trying to tie for power and sort of, you know, growing power in that sort yeah. of age. Yeah. That was a bit of a narrative article, this one. I don't know if they had yeah. much more. Yeah. And they talk about, you know, the siege is coming, but they're going to focus on other stories before they sort of get to yeah. That sort yeah. of climax as such, which yeah, you know. I, I really think, especially after we've seen the roadmap, that this first version and even probably even into the second and whatever is not going to do. They're not going to move it that quick, you know, to that no. to that no. um, to the siege of Prague. So, which is cool. There's heaps to explore then. So that's going to be good. <clears throat> then we get um, the actual journal. They talk about it, so they go a little bit more into uh, what well, they talk about the actual characters they've got mm. the gore rock model um uh, i'm just trying to read this on the go here what, anything you guys might have to help me here oh then they are um, yeah well they introduced yeah, the two trying. the two um the two Im armies of infamy so the mm. wolves of the sea yeah. which are more of the marauder type one and then we all well actually they don't actually i don't think in this article they mentioned the next one but we know what it is no. it's like the, the mountain but yeah, yeah. They, they mentioned the story the of um the wolves of the sea and it's gonna say freighter but that's from um vikings well what's his name Fr Friedel. 
Fried owl. Fried yeah. owl. Fried owl. I don't know. Fried owl. Say, yeah. 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 And then yeah. what's this like a little scenario they've made where they're, yeah, they're she's trying to land sort of near Middenheim yeah, or something, actually, or is it coming yeah, out she's of actually Middenheim? landed on there. They say that she's sort mm. of like they've made up camp on on sort of the top part of Empire taking there, some, taking she's some settlements to go in there, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so I imagine some of the scenarios in the Icon Journal will be addressing this kind of thing. Um, yeah, yep. that you can play out with it against the forces of Empress Margrita. Um, and then they said that it'll just be intentionally sort of left open ended. Mm. Um, yeah, and said what, what, what? And share? We have to share our results. Share your results. Yeah, yeah email. Or something like that. Email no, email know how it happened on your bat, your tabletop. There it is. Yeah, there. yeah. That's right. What do you guys no, think like about it. that good. idea? As such, like. Arcane journals are sort of telling the story rather than a like a narrative. Not not saying like they're, they're saying they want to stay away from the book, but like you've got your sort of general's handbook that sort of like sets the picture and tells the story. So instead of doing mm-hmm. that, they're doing it via Arcane Journal. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. No, well, yeah. I mean, it's not this I article, I don't think, but the next one where they talk about the fact that. They are going to bring out more arcane journals and that, like, rather than sort of versions, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, so it will be really interesting to see what that that first arcane journal that isn't tied to, you know, one of the nine factions is going to do. That's going to be really cool because it would be probably more of a one or more scenarios in it, but plus a bunch of sort of extra characters and units that you can put into different armies. Uh, and yeah. I would imagine an arcane journal might even move into the fact that there's probably two main factions in each one maybe or something like that where they can theme what's their talk about challenge. separating the arcane journal from a singular faction well sort of it's in the next article where they talk about yeah. um so jty says we plan to make uh, keep making arcane journals these allow us to tell stories that progress over time which is a change in how we do things yep. at warhammer previously we released a big book telling a grand story and then leave it at that until the next edition arcane journals gives us a chance a change in perspective to tell small stories which we have the option to revisit later on we've already talked about the war in border princes and the reclamation of the, yeah the mm. bazard cost for example um but they do talk about the fact that there's also like yeah they're doing the siege to prague but then they can just jump somewhere else and do a whole different story like yeah totally, yeah like it just doesn't have to be well they're all kind of all over the shop aren't they it's not like it's yeah. all centered around a yeah yeah, I guess Andrew's right. They don't specifically say they're not they're looking at making arcane journals that aren't tied to a specific faction. But it's sort of possible. But it's plausible from what they've written that that's what they were yeah. meaning, I think. Well, yeah, I just took yeah. it as potentially... Well, I just don't know. Unless they start bringing out the legacy ones and then they give an arcane journal for them and stuff. So, yeah, who yeah. knows? But I agree. Um, like a campaign, like the Lord, a Lord of the Rings style campaign book where you get a few extra units and some characters in the book mm. with a bunch of scenarios, that would be really interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'd yeah. be really keen for that. And then you get this picture here, which now we know what it is, but you've got like the chaos, but you've got beastmen in it as well, which now we know they, they can be mercenaries in the chaos armies in one of the, well, just in general. Well, no, the sea... Oh, one of them. I can't remember which one is. Maybe it is the sea, the wolf bulls of the sea. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. When I said Lord of the Rings, by the way, that. I meant like the War in Rohan book. That's what yes. I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, <laughs> it wasn't clear. <laughs> then the last one. Oh, and that's the same one, is it? Forbidden Journal. I must have done the same. Sorry. Must have opened up the same one. Uh, I thought there was three articles. Is it this one? Well, the rules for the rules cards? Ah, oh, then the rules one. Which starts yep. opening up. I mean, well, have you guys had a chance to go through what's been shared? Have you watched any of the Arcane Journal video? I've or... read through the scans. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, what do you think? So, basically, you end up with yeah the um, the official. Yeah, <laughs> you end up with the Wolves of the Sea, and then you've got the Heralds the of Darkness scans. or Steve. Yeah, Heralds of Darkness yeah. one. Um, yeah. It seems from the internet, everyone's jumping on the. Um, the C one that will see yeah. the one because you got some of the extra new so units cool. and yeah, um, you know beefed up marauders and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it yeah. looks it looks more fun to play with and probably it more does. fun to play against. To be honest, yeah. it's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's also got is that the one with thirty three percent rare or maybe they all have? I don't know. It's kind of funny they have jacked up some oh. different percentages, which is getting interesting. Um, okay. 
Yeah, I think it was that one. Um, oh, do you? I just like the ambushing rule. I reckon the ambushing rule is awesome. Yeah, what's changed on that? That the she can uh, well, that special character can help them ambush as well and give more ambushes. Was there other ambush stuff? Yeah, you just you pay you pay the points. I think it just the means special... the prevalence oh, of paying for the rule. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. you also get free one, don't you? If you've taken that special character. Yeah, I think so. I think she pays and then, for. And then she gives. I think she can give that modified plus or minus one role as well to ambushes. Mm-hmm. So just making them more reliable, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, marauders sure. aren't they? They're not bad, and marauders on like horses, I reckon they'll be. And they got that like the, you know that, I uh, think you get a four up save out of one of them, so they're they're not too bad. Yeah, they've got that one that's almost a dwarf on it, like it's four three three four for weapon skill, mm. <laughs> you know, ballistic strength, toughness. Uh, yeah, oh, it's yeah. very dwarfy. Yeah, yeah, and then you've got. The ability to potentially get frenzied with them and things like that. Some of them yeah. take drilled. Um, they're getting quite kind of cool. And the fact that out of all the armies, Chaos has some very good AOS units for this. That, it's funny, ASB just sent me a message this afternoon saying, This is what I just bought. <laughs> I swear it must be six hundred dollars worth of AOS. Um, when when I just went through what he said. I didn't look at it in detail, but it's all the new, you know, dark oath stuff. Oh, oh yeah. of course. He's, he's, got, he's, got so a little, good, he's got a little system going on. He, it's... Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Reading the and then you've got the sea wolves in this one. Um, so we're just randomly jumping around this because we're going to do a proper arcane journal later. Um, not sea wolves, the uh, – what those skin wolves? Oh, the skin wolves, yeah. They look bloody awesome with swift stride yeah. and movement seven and then you can choose like different attack – like yeah. like not attacks, but yeah. Yeah. like – Transformations, yeah. yeah. They're very um, beast manny, you know. Um, yeah, well, they seem like one of the other useful monstrous infantry. Most monstrous infantry is a bit, mm, you know, where well, these guys look like they might actually do some damage because they can actually get into combat too because they're fast. Mm. Yeah. Well, half most of the monstrous most of the rare slot of that um Wolves of the Sea is monstrous infantry. <laughs> Is all various. Um, oh, because it's either trolls and beastmen. Yes. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, haven't, I'm, I is, don't have the book up on me, so I'm not looking, but yeah. Which sort of almost harks back to the old Hordes of Chaos where you could just slot in yeah. whatever beastmen you wanted into a Warriors of Chaos army. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Which I think has always been a very is... popular concept. Yeah, and I wonder if, um, you know, I don't know, I feel like the Gores aren't a bad unit either with their additional <laughs> hand could. weapons and stuff yeah. like that. I wonder if they'd be a useful you know, unit to throw in there, you know. Yeah. Just as a, uh, only if you're allowed to take mercenaries. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing, relevant you basically event you're to, at. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> you got to, like, yeah, like that's that's such a themey thing that you can just take gun gores in this list. Like they have thought that through. It's not just you just got this random open slather of stuff you yeah, can put in yeah. as mercenaries. Yeah, it's not like yeah. they're going, oh, like, guess what? you can take all these cannons now in the uh, Chaos Army. You know, they're not doing yeah. that sort of stuff. And, but, and you do have some... Um, potential problems by taking mercenaries in mm. terms of their reliability. Oh, as Apparently, I found out on the weekend. As you found out. <laughs> oh, right. Am I just cursed? I, no, I refuse to believe that, but what the hell? And the like in, was it Castle Salt with that reserve one? I rolled three ones and then at Belcon, I rolled five ones to start the game. I um, remember that Belcon. That yeah, was like half my army. Half your army. Like, just... hey, what the, f-? yeah. And my t- first time I take mercenaries in Old World, two of them, two Doomseekers, rolled ones. Oh, I can't, can't give away all your secrets this year. Yes. <laughs> Spoilers. The hell. Um, but anyway, what do you think about the this Warriors Duel special rule? Oh, man, I, I love the um, the anger and confusion that going on. <laughs> about the Bretonians. What's going to happen? This is ridiculous. And all the arguments <laughs> yeah. about this, this, this picture. <laughs> Yeah, I can't pray. <laughs> can't pray. It's, not work. it's ridiculous. And then suddenly you get the whole book, and then suddenly they've actually got it. Like everyone's like, "Oh, it'll yeah. be FAQ." Blah blah blah. Yeah, it's yeah, a huge it's rule soul. Yeah. It's actually just in the book. <laughs> That's great. It's like classic nerd rage. It's yeah, it is. Oh. Yeah. And then it's all just you know, twenty four hours later, it's all it's all disappeared. Everyone's yeah. like, "Oh, okay, they had thought this through." But what do you just reckon really you'll do for the rule. meta? Like, are you going to tool up some champs, or are you just not going to just gonna care about it? Or I oh, probably don't care about it, but I reckon it's, it's pretty rare. Like it's the chance, so cool. 
the chances of you coming up against this specific list in any given day, mm. I don't think it's worth tooling up for. Yeah, right. Is it? I don't know. Unless I everyone mean, takes Wolves of the Sea. Well, something. I think you'll see a few of them pop up for a while. They'll be a, definitely... Sh- spe- given that there's no other armies coming out too, I think um, mm. I think you might see a few more pop up over the next six months. I think you'd need more than one faction that has this rule for it to become yeah, a thing, I think, true. if you don't have to build for. Um, a bit, what you're probably better build for is just assume that you might even just go second. Who cares? You know, like, that's what it is. Like, yeah. Um, or do, hang deal, on, do they like, do they get the first turn? Yeah. If they win, yeah. yeah, if yeah you they, decline, they, do, they don't choose. They just they get it. Yeah. So whoever oh, really? whoever wins that controlling play takes the first turn. Yeah. Well, they they won the roll off to determine which player takes the first turn, which in the book, yeah, says you just take the first turn, which again is still yeah. still arguably unclear. But yeah, mm-hmm. that's another mm-hmm. topic for another day. Yeah, no, so they're good. Um, Like I said, the uh, warp form for the skin wolves looks good. Um, Is this the article that talks about the cat? We've got to touch on this. The other thing, well, actually, hold on. One more thing without challenging. Yeah, yeah. If you tool up your character in anticipation of this happening, Mm -hmm. it might just not issue the jewel and just go, I want to see the roll off. Yeah, true. Yeah. And it's not that you can tool the character that far anyway, like a champ. The champ, um, yeah. But I just was wondering, Ed brought it up. On, I think it was Ed. He brought it up on there. Uh, he's Arcane Journal 1 with uh, Chris Cousins. And he was just saying uh, he would consider just bringing things like Paymaster coin and stuff on a on a champ. Just to, like there's little items going back to our point at the 25 time. 25 points. <laughs> actually might be useful then, because then, you know, you just never know. You yeah, know, charm shield extra. might, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you charm exactly. shield. Yeah. Five points, yeah. I could see yeah. that, yeah. yeah. That'd be worthwhile. Yeah, yeah, we could put it on a ground night champ. Yeah, what's well, the thing, you know? So well, it actually it really gets a five up ward, so maybe not. Well, well not that one, but you might give him something yeah, else yeah. or I don't know, you know, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, but then also you don't want to lose a, whatever he is, 30 point, you know, dude. You might just want to feed him friggin' peasant. You know? <laughs> so. I probably would actually, yeah, because if <laughs> as long as I set the challenge, I can pray anyway, isn't it? That was the that was the paragraph, wasn't it? I can still pray. Yes. I as long as I accept the challenge, it's yeah, not. Yeah, so like you just you would just go, I'm going set I'm using so I probably would anyway, just feed so him I'll something. just feed you. Yeah. I think uh, there's some funny. That's making a mockery of the that. entire rule. Yeah. Yeah. Because they got like this big chaos guy and they got like this little skink champion or something. They're just like feeding to him. <laughs> it's cool. Oh, is that, I haven't some, seen that one. I've seen the one about nah, the, some good the memes ogres. got around about There's that. One right, about yeah. like the ogres don't have a multi wound, you know, a single wound, and then suddenly yeah, it's got yeah, like yeah. the little nobler trapper dude coming around the corner. Oh, oh yeah, maybe that was do. it. The nobler, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the guy in the little pink suit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess um, the ground champ is actually one of the most powerful champions, though. Yeah. Like, to be honest, I'd almost depending on what the champion is and situation the challenge, I'd almost be tempted to go. Because you get your prayer, you you've technically prayed then as well. Do you get the blessing and as long as I accept the challenge, I get the yeah. blessing regardless. Yeah, totally. So I mean, you get first turn and you got the blessing. Bloody, you, you get to blow the horn. It's good. <gasps> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so, so everyone's you watch, everyone's going to be taking Grail Knights now. <laughs> I already take Ground Knights. I, take I know, but it's not like you don't see them in all the Bretons. No one else so. sees them. I don't know why. No, I know. I that's what I'm saying. But they're, yeah, they're about the only figure that can stand up to Because, yeah, these dudes will throw a bloody Chaos guy, which is, you know, pretty good. What's a Forsaken as well, champ? Do you get them, champs? Mm. They're probably okay too. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. Um. Anyway, sorry. Um. Yeah, we'll get onto this. Anyway, sorry, thing. I just dragged you back in. So yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Although I just Longest I wanted to have left. one I wanted to have one gripe before I got there. Do you remember when I and I didn't take a picture of this, but I did mention it the other week that I was looking at the um the Manticore in the mm. AOS range and I swear it said eighty five dollars. And I might have been looking at the wrong mm. currency then. But yes, they have done what we thought. They've re released it and they've jacked the price up. It's something like I don't know, overseas it's like 30% more or whatever. It's $135 yeah, yeah. in Australia, um, oh. whereas it was literally the same kit 
two weeks ago right. or whatever. And I, what, I might be wrong with the 85, but it wasn't 135. I'm sure you said 85 when you I did say 85, week. but I don't know if I took a picture of it. And so I'm thinking maybe I might have been on like US current. I don't know. Maybe I was on a different. I don't think I was, but. And if it was 85 and it's gone to 135. <laughs> God. <laughs> You know how many 3D printers you can buy yeah. with those differences? Um, that is. You know, yeah. Plastic That's Woolworths and Coles. The bottle of resin. Having said GW, that, price gouging. I thought of that is that Warp Fire Dragon, which rules are awesome, is actually less than the Manticore, which is really weird because it looks like a pretty cool Forge World model. No, it does. Yeah. It um, and it's actually less in Australia than, than the Manticore. So mm. pff, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how they set their price. That's odd. Yeah. Because yeah. when they're saying the more it costs, the better it should be. Yeah, so yeah, we'll get to that. So let's have a look. I'm, I'm so this, excited this, to get to this. I'm so excited. Is this? Is it just described in here? It is, isn't it? Yeah. So the Chaos the, Lord, so Danny, who, nothing against Danny, but, you know, he's building out his orcs. You know, that's basically what he was doing in that video. So he seems like a pretty experienced warrior. Out of player. touch, Danny. <laughs> Poor Daddy. Sorry, Daddy. Uh, but yeah, the Chaos Lord of Dragon is undoubtedly very powerful at present, especially if you spec him to murder everything he touches. But there is counterplay. There's magic you can look at. Mm, magic. What? Maybe. A magic weapon in the core rulebook called a dragon slaying sword, which I've not seen too many of. And yeah, because it has no fucking armor piercing or anything else. <laughs> uh, Bretonia has a few answers, including <laughs> virtues. Yeah, cool. Uh, many Which factions can bring their own true. big lord on a dragon. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, and those that so that's they've just acknowledged that what we came up with with our dragon thing six months ago was you have to bring a dragon. Um, <laughs> and those that can't, can't make up for it by lugging big cannons onto the field, um, they won't manage it in one shot. But two or three shots should kill a dragon. Yeah, but, oh, that's so but, optimistic. But it's in combat. Like it's in combat after the second or third turn. Sure I'm taking two cannon cannons. It. I'm taking two or three shots, and when it doesn't kill it, I'll be cursing your name, Danny. <laughs> Damn you, but Danny! Then, doesn't it get better? This is the best bit. Remember, a tooled up Lord of Dragons is nearly 600. Empire armies can lock them down with flagellants. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, do they play the game? <laughs> this is why they don't give us access to arcane journals, Gomo. Yeah. Danny's there going, no, nah, they're blacklisted old world fanatics. They're not getting arcane journals. Yeah, like, Gomo, where, where were your flagellants? I mean, the perfect counter. I don't even know how, how can you even think? Like, like firstly, they're not even going to get in combat. They're movement four. <laughs> but even if they do... The dragon just flies away because you added this cool <laughs> rule that <laughs> you don't have to follow up. Like, like, do they play the? I think they got confused with eight dead or something. What the fuck? Fucking sense. <laughs> Even in eight dead, you're not going to catch the. Oh god. Oh. <clears throat> Old out of touch, That's... Danny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so good. It's just it's pretty oh, good for you to worth only a few hundred points. What's yeah. That? Half the cost of the dragon, anyway. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Look, there is counterplay. I mean, we're, we're you know, there's things you can try and do, but certainly it's not what the they suggest. <clears throat> yeah, the ogre blade uh, is the one that can do the fucking damage. <clears throat> yeah, usually with an ogre blade on a dragon, <laughs> can yep. hurt another dragon. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, funny, funny. That's all good, but yeah, it's pretty yeah. funny. Um, these dragons have toughness six, which is not insurmountable. <laughs> I know, but... It's not, yeah, the toughness six it's by itself the isn't it's the, the problem. Three, it's the multi saves <laughs> and the number of wounds they've got, yeah. plus the dude probably three on up, top of two them. up, <clears throat> yeah. five up, five up. Yeah. Mm. Major. That's the fly. And, and the, <clears> the, yeah. the It's just the whole constellation of everything together. Yeah. Yeah, the, the only thing is there weapon. is we cut one in half. Few answers. Yeah, mm. you put a, a well, we do. With that. Yeah, you we've do. Got, yeah, we've actually do. We, all it takes is a horn that prevents the entire enemy's army of flying. A yeah. duke that can charge in any direction. Yeah. Um, and with can the ogre blade, out, with, with that your, either with the ogre blade, with attacks. eight attacks, with yeah. hatred. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what happens? <laughs> that's exactly what. That's All why the steam tank disappeared. 
<laughs> seven hits, seven wounds through on a steam tank in one go. You know, like it's just like, yeah, cool. Wait, were they seven <clears> wounds <throat> before the the? Multiplier? No, that was uh, that's seven wounds after the ogre blade. Yeah, oh, like up, like gonna say. you know. No, he didn't get he didn't get seven of his eight through. Like in terms of just that. <laughs> but pretty close. I mean, yeah, when you get um. Because well, you're hitting on threes, re-rolling, and then re-rolling, and then we shrink seven. Then, What's the tough of the a seven? Team? So he rolled. So oh, tough so it's four. Fours. So that's four up. Okay. And then so you... uh, roll. He did roll well. He rolled a five and a six for his um the the wound two wounds. I think he got. Through. I can't. Remember you boys are just giving it all away, aren't you? Oh, I'm not going to go through my whole battle report anyway. That's yeah, on. It's, it's on be... YouTube. So yeah. Everyone's tuning out now. Do we go to that? Do we go to that? Now? We've talked about this stuff. Do we go to the topics? Not that no, there no, I, topics. There's just games. oh, there's a bit more to talk about there. Like oh, I do there? think <clears throat> that people are beginning to work out how to deal with powerful heroes, but we are watching the scene. This is the mm. level that we want these big monsters to be at because That's they're investing in money, do... yep, time, oh, okay. and points. <laughs> So that's where they, it's just, that's where they admit that. Just disappointing <clears throat> if it gets just blown off the table by a cannon shot, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I. Do... So they want them to be at this yeah. level. That's what they're saying. <clears throat> this is not a problem. Which is they probably shouldn't in, put interesting take. In money, but I do think I do like the idea that dragons are scary. Like I don't mind that. Um, hmm. They just, guess, they just shouldn't be auto takes. Yes. And they shouldn't the, be the only counter bringing your own dragon, BYO yes. dragon. Yeah. 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 There should be some really big downside to taking it. And, and look, to be honest, when you think about that, if you go from that point of view, then it really it comes down to maybe that the only way to stop that is maybe really crank the points up on it. Because you could still take it, but you have to really, it has to make its points up. Oh, you know, yeah. Like imagine if it cost 800 that's one points to do a Lord on Dragon. You're not, you don't have that magic back up. You're going to go eat, you know. Um, but I guess you could. Uh, it's a very yeah. blunt way of doing it. I think yeah, it'd it be is. nicer if they could just ease it back a bit so that you've got more counterplay to it rather than just being this horrible thing that's really hard to crack. Yeah. Um, just take the do you think, away. Those yeah, like <clears throat> water region is a very simple way of cutting it. But what about, what about the, again, this is just, what about if the fact that, the pull, the push pull mechanic stuff didn't allow you to, like, you had to follow up. Like, it's it, maybe oh, you, you just get rid of the push pull stuff. You're just like old school combat. You're in combat. Oh, so just therefore, reduced mobility. That's one of the the core things of the old world, though. Is yeah, I know, but if you if you got rid of that, I I, I don't think I would care <laughs> if it went. I don't mind it, but I still you can't get rid of that and play this game. But if, if you yeah, got rid of yeah. that, okay, then yes, you yes. can technically, if you can get something in that is, you know, a big unit or if you can get, you know, you can pin it with something or a stubborn unit or whatever, then suddenly you can. Oh, you know, flagellants? Yes, you know, flagellants. You know, you get that doom on dark, <laughs> what's it called? The, the steed of shadows on them, get them across the board and maybe try and get a charge off next turn before it flies away. And, you know, I don't know. Like... The problem is you can't even lock things in combat anymore. That's the that's one of the challenges. You know, I run into yeah, the weekend yeah. the same thing. Like you just you lose around a combat, a flying unit of pegs is just gonna fly away. You know, it's yeah, like, mm. that's true. I sort of forget that because the horn is so oppressive to dragons that I can redirect them and block them and prevent yeah, them from flying yeah. away. But yeah. yeah, you're right. That, that it's yeah, awful. It's oppressive so it's, to bat swarms too, Josh. <laughs> That's what you're talking about. They can one still, they can still <laughs> charge one. seven inches. One. <laughs> <laughs> movement one. And then you hit them with miasma and they get minus one movement. Does that mean they go backwards? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. I, I didn't have illusion. Yeah. That day. Yeah. Neither. Neither miasma. Them. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, people are probably, I don't know, people are either really uh, loving us just gripe about this or they're over it um we Let's should just on. quickly touch i forgot about this so we got the roadmap out which oh, yes. um oh yeah uh, the shit is done griping. The, yeah we haven't done with the griping. I, I don't mind the roadmap in general i mean it's it's good to have an answer it's nice to um, have a roadmap yeah so i'm not complaining can't about complain that. about having a map i think the diagram was hard to read and took a little bit to work out because it that bottom oh, line a diagram I thought it was oh, a table. Sorry, a timeline. Oh, it is. It is a timeline. But it's not a timeline because it's like it? just not true. <laughs> <'Cause> 
<laughs> so I don't know. I don't know who does these things. So firstly, this was obviously done like months ago because it was saying like, um, was it still to come? Dwarven mountain holes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a, yeah. Yeah. I don't know oh, when yeah. this was supposed. Everything gets so delayed by Games Workshop. They just even their literature comes out yeah. late. Um, but then they got Warriors of Chaos, March to War, yeah. cool, cool. We, we know all that and beyond. And then you have this line that goes all the way over to the old world. So you follow that across. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get and then you get to army boxes, heroes, plastic, man. And you go, okay, what, what am I? More army factions. <laughs> I'm getting more plastic. factions. And That's then you go. Present. And then I'm getting higher. I thought they said empires come in. And then you realize, oh, hang on. No, it's not. You got to read top left, mm. the top left to bottom, and then top right to oh, bottom. It is even that, though there's yeah, a line so at the bottom line. joining them together. It's oh. just like, <laughs> who did this? <laughs> yeah. It's um, Friday afternoon, clearly. Oh. Yeah, but yeah. and we're never getting we're never getting arcane journals, are we? Um, twenty twenty five. The good thing say. is. They say Empire of Man. So what do you guys think about this, though? Empire of Man, High Elves, which is cool. I think they're going to come out pretty quick. Um, if we saw from pretty last quick, year. Pretty quick, as in, in the new after, year. Yeah. in the new year, as in five months away. In GW, yeah, I reckon, I reckon oh, 2nd of January, Empire sure. Man have got are coming. You know, like it's going to be like Old World last year where it was like everyone's at Christmas and they're releasing the Old World. Um, oh, sorry, New Year's. Um, they don't mind. They'll release us in Just January. Just remember there were shipping quiet. problems. The yeah. So then you got Empire Man and High Elves, and then they say more factions. Like, is that that's literally just more factions, as in what we've still like Beastmen and Wood Elves? Well, how many like more left? Well, sure. Would that be? That's it. Yeah. Is that it? it? Just Beastmen yeah. and Wood Elves? Yeah. So more factions. Well, but do you think the Wood Elves? It? Is it <laughs> that, or do you think order? it's potentially something? Do you reckon they open it up from then? No, they can't. They would oh, just get think the nine done, wouldn't they? They're just going to get shafted, and like some, they'll just release some other arcane journal. Well, I don't know. That's what people have been saying. That maybe, <laughs> maybe are they going to throw out another uh, like, or they're going to bring one of the legacies in by then. I don't think so. I reckon they're going to do this edition. The conspiracy. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I think fashion. the legacies are going to be out in the cold for this whole edition. Surely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think they said that in the in the financial report you know like it's just like they they can't change stuff they've got a plan and they keep to it you know um, do they have a plan i see empire and high elves shouldn't they have a plan of oh yeah they, no, they probably do but they don't go they, i don't think they want to like totally say when they're gonna just in case things do move around a little bit like and gets pushed into 2026 or I, I think they'll get all four out next year and then it's done one would hope, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I at least they have set our expectations a bit lower. Like, I was fully expecting they'd do one more faction before the end of the year. Um, I th well, you heard been... last week, oh, I was yeah. going on that they might get two more and then they'll they get them all done. And, the then, and then I'll next say, year's a gap balls. year yeah. and maybe they'll throw us some surprises, but now that's not happening. <laughs> nah, so, yeah. I thought yeah. Empire's coming out for sure yeah. before the end of the year. I thought I that, that Chris Chaos, so, yeah. My prediction now, for what it's worth, which is nothing, is um, they're going to get all four out by like next year, and we will see at least one of these other little arcane journals, whatever the hell that means, or a tournament thing. And then, obviously, then I think the year after that is forty k again. Is that right? And then uh, AOS again, and then it'll be old world V two, and that's when we get Cathay and. His live and big box Ooh. sets and stuff. So that's still 28, 2028. 2028. Yeah. That's what I'm putting down. Mark my words, everyone. 2028. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So it's a long way Mark, away, I reckon. This yeah. timestamp. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you got a 3D right. printing go, man. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Well, I just said a lot of time to get all the armies out by then, like our is, normal armies out by then. Yeah. 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 Or they could even do like legacy in between there, just a little bit as well, just like dribble them out as official factions and stuff. But mm. yeah, I'm not sure they're gonna. I don't see how they're gonna release a full version two with two new plastic armies in the middle of AOS and 40k release years. Do you reckon? Like, I don't understand. If it's not next year, which it can't be, it's back to the cycle. Aren't they on three year releases, 40k and AOS? Oh. I think so. Surely after 10th was, yeah, 
Because mm. AOS just came out. Yeah, it's usually last three years. Year, so we've got a gap year, then we get 40K again, then we get AOS, you know. Yeah. Could they not do it the same year? I don't know. Specialist Maybe. game. True. I mean, Heresy came out time, last year as table. well on 40K, was it, or the year before? I can't remember. Aren't they making new before? factories as well? Isn't the whole thing a throwing? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm stuck talking us, about. So stuck us out of money. <laughs> Let's move on. Well, I mean, I apparently, know. you've decided that they're releasing Kislev and Cathay when the new edition comes out. You seem yeah. very sure about yeah, this. I've been talking to Danny. You know something that we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. We're getting halflings versus um, the what's it called vampire coasts. That's what we're getting. Oh, that would be cool. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that would be good. <laughs> Uh, a half, halfling half tank. Yeah. Halfling half tank, yeah. Okay, let's uh, look. I don't know. Um, this is going to be way bigger episode than I thought because crapped on for too long. What, we uh, haven't even my, got the hobby. What are we well, doing? My hobby no, is yeah, one thing. Thinking. So yeah. <clears throat> that's just gaming and stuff. So well, who wants to go? Did you do anything, Andrew? Um, I tried to glue um, the. Oh, yeah, that's uh, right. I, don't, I haven't got them yet. The, so Gomo is printing them out three beautiful. Um, uh, oh. Sky cutters, lock, lock sky and sky cutters. cutters. Yeah, it's like a paper plane you're about to throw across the paper room. Paper plane, yeah. it does. <clears throat> um, beautiful. These are beautiful sculpts. Um, it has like a um, the base is basically. Oh, fuck shit! Shit! Didn't bring it all out. Anyway, the base is like a, a, a obelisk, a, a obelisk, a, a obelisk, oh, whatever it is. Um, I shouldn't do this while I drink. Um, anyway, this basically glues onto that, but there's no real good spot that it glues onto. So I was playing around for a couple of days trying to get that sorted. Um, and I could not get it to stick. Um, so basically I'm trying to come up with a bit of an idea on how to get that sorted. And the only other thing I've been doing is scheming as well. And cause I can't commit to anything. I've actually started looking back into my chaos dwarves. Um, oh, you did mention that the oh. other. Oh, when you drop, when you pick those up, that's right. Yeah, yeah cool. So watch this space. I'll <clears throat> put some more chaos dwarves together and then change my mind again and then start something else. We could have a chaos dwarf game. That'd be fun. Yeah. I've got well, some new chaos dwarf sculpts actually in uh, one of those patrons i'm in they're starting to dribble out some chaos dwarfs i mean you've already got a bunch hey you've already got them yeah. all you got forge world ones now yeah? i've got some forge world ones oh, yes. okay. yeah cost me a pack um but yeah i've got i've got forge world ones i've got uh some age of sigma stuff um but yeah i've after the whole revamp of somebody made a really good point on the um actually in the youtube comments about the uh whatever they are like the not the noblars, but the the hobgrit, hobgrit, hob, hobgrots, or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. AOS. Yeah, yeah, because they're only three points a piece. But I mean, well. they're hob, they're hobgoblins. Hobgoblins, yeah. But you mean you're using the AOS hob? Oh, I'm hob sorry. Yeah, I'm using the hobgoblins. Yeah, hobgoblins, yeah, ho hobgoblins yeah. with um, bows. Um, yeah. Who's against large targets? Yeah. Yeah, you can shoot. So you're basically playing an orc army. That's what you're saying. Well, uh, no, no, because I was looking into. <laughs> Also playing um, the uh, oh, have you got the rocket battery D six wounds. Oh yeah, pretty good. Wow, it sounds like a one something to shoot at a dragon. Could be six. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Although There's you can't because it's legacy, around. so you can't use that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> they can't mention that because it's a legacy. Oh, okay. yeah. But no, no, no. I, I need I need to get this sorted because I was going to take it to Moab. Oh, I need to take my high elves there. Dust yeah, because you haven't painted the Chaos Dwarfs, though. You couldn't take that. I mean, you could, but they're not no, painted, no. are they? I've assembled about 20, 25 yeah, Dwarfs, yeah. 30, somewhere in there. And I'll have lots. I've got a big box of them. So. Mm. Mm. Well, anyway, how'd you guys go? Well, um, do you, have you got hobby? Are you going to do hobby and your camp tournament, or what are you going to do? Uh, uh, I was going to do the tournament thing later. I'll just quickly yeah. do. I haven't really haven't done much hobby. Um, I did spend all day playing at a tournament, so I was printing 
mostly my hobby consists of printing. And that's all I do, awesome. apparently, anymore. That's all I ever do. So I've just been printing more tiles and oh, my MCs and cool. things. But this is quite that's a few good. tiles now. Mm. That's a lot of tiles. Um, I ran out of magnets, so I had to stop and then waiting for more magnets to arrive. Because that whole thing is a flexible yeah. sheet of steel. Yeah. That I'm but now, do those to... tiles have it built in? Or do you just drill something? Or how, like, how do you stick the magnet on? Uh, yeah, there's a little indent in the, underneath. Cool. Um, awesome. <clears throat> low just, medium. Um, so, yeah, yeah. like an, I usually get the eight millimeter by two millimeter thick ones. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to start painting this stuff. Once I've got mm, it all set okay, out, I'm going so cool. I'm, I'm gonna to prime them and uh, really start working on painting them. Um, but yeah, it's starting to lay out. And if I can, I don't know if you can see, I printed out the map I had for the um, campaign booklet so i'm trying oh, yeah, to replicate to the layout oh. of it with the rivers and the <laughs> forest have, and... have you got a wrong orientation there though or like have you well half the map is sea so oh, right, i sort okay. of had to turn it like 30 degrees and then sort oh, of 45 yeah. degrees and then sort of semi follow it with a little bit of artistic license mm -hmm. <laughs> um but but yeah that's that's that like i've been just my printer has been running Quite a lot. I've almost hit 60k. Um, yeah, that doesn't level take long, already. especially with like, So, oh. did you adjust any of your layer width? Like, like how did yeah, you Yeah, I'm go doing 0.02. 0 .02. I adjusted so everything. I didn't, than mine, yeah. I got 0.25 I didn't, still, but yeah. I didn't print anything on the default. I pretty much just changed it all immediately to what I like and then started printing. I go 1.5 seconds per layer and then, yeah, 0 0.02. Um, the rest of it we should, I should get, well, well, we'll do this later, but I should. Find we should get the same file and I want the same settings type thing. And then I want to see how fast yours is versus mine because I like, apparently that the way it pulls off is faster. So therefore it should be quicker. Oh, yeah. I should turn that setting back on. I, I turned the, 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 you know, the, I the, think the, there the was a, a speed setting on it, a high <clears> or <throat> standard. And I turned just the standard, which I think is right. turned off the, the tilting thing. So I should. Ah, okay. Off. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. It's I'll just binge and see how quick that is versus you know normal. I guess I could look it up, but yeah. Cool. Mine's yep, printing some it. stuff now. Mine's printing. I haven't. This printed is much just, this Hobby week. Corner is now just three D printing corner apparently. Yeah, That's all I haven't printed about. much this week. And, and Andrew making excuses after <laughs> playing. So my hobby. Well, actually, I'll just quickly. Well, actually, these are my hobby pictures. Do you want me to do mine then quickly? Um, the, uh, these are not my hobby. These are gill That's your hobby. That's your hobby. It leads into my Incredible. hobby. Incredible. Uh, these are gill thrusters. Yeah. Bloody so nice. He so cranks cool. out. Not, so wait, so our hobby now is actually other people's hobby, which is. Yeah. 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 Fine. It's, this is we'll, take that. Good. we'll take that. And the first thing I said, and I, someone else said it on a different thing when he posted it was, what are you using for the golden stuff? So, um, he was using these guys, the army speed. Army Painter Speed Paint oh, Metallic set. So I went and bought that <laughs> you the next bought. day on Amazon. And there, yeah, that hot light gold is just awesome. Um, is it? Really? Yeah, it just flows I... on. And so is the uh, this one, the Broadsword Silver is cool. Uh, and so is this Enchanted Steel. I was oh, using that for a sword on my Empire. Okay. And it just, yeah, it's good. I should try it. I have hot light gold sitting here. I've never okay. used it. Yeah. I mean, the others are probably good too, but just in case, just to, it's good to have. I use yeah, the metallic speed silver. Paint. I haven't. Had I wasn't that happy with it, and then I didn't use any of the other metallic. I've only oh, got three. Okay. I've only got three because they came okay. in the other, the main pack. What but, do you like about the broads? Uh, broads, oh, like just too translucent. Oh, okay. Ooh. I don't know. I didn't it's get good coverage on from my it. One. I wasn't. I wasn't that mm. on board with it, but maybe I wasn't using it right. Oh, I don't know. It's, it worked pretty well on the pistoliers that I speed playing because I just smashed through. So with this army that I played, I had to have um, – I I had eight outriders, but I had five pistoliers, so I just painted up three. And then mm. um, and then I painted a – Is that with broadsword, that that um that guy in the foreground? Have you done those metallics with – no, broadsword, yes, or is that it's just a... painted? Yeah, there it is. That I mean, it's a bad picture, but that's broadsword. Oh, that looks right. good. Yeah, that looks... and that's just one coat. Is that just off white? Uh, well, like, it's a no, with white. It's under a, a very heavy zenithal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. That's, that's good that's off of white. That's yeah, really good off of white. 
that's actually ah, oh, it was fine. Good. The I mean, the only thing I didn't enjoy about the because I smashed him out like in two days is I tried contrast on the horse. I'm never doing that again. It's fucking shit. So I'm gonna yeah. have to go back. Just and too much them. wide too open flat, spaces. Too flat. Yeah, it's not. not you can it use it like a three year old paint job. Like a paint Surely for a base, it would be bad. Basically. Yeah, you it can use okay it for, for initial shading, and then if you just layer on top of that, yeah, right. well, it, it needs layer. But I'll go back thing. to these guys; they were just really quick. Even their cape, I just did one coat of contrast, no highlight. So I just, I just mm-hmm. had to just smash it out. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, you could, well, that's the three there. You can't. I mean, they don't look much different when you look at them from a battle <laughs> point of view. No. You know what I mean? But yeah, no, it's really good. I, I'm glad I found. Um, a metallic one like that because I think it's going to be heaps useful for the dwarves because that was one of the issues I had when going to contrast. You, like, I mean, Josh won't understand this, but as someone who's always painted on black undercoat, because oh, I, I don't, right, who are you? Which is the correct way. <laughs> What's um, going on? <laughs> with, your, with the standard way of base and all that stuff. Um, when you went to white, when I've gone over to white for the contrasts or, or at least a very white you know, once you do all the xenothol, it's very light coloured. Um, the metallics are a pain in the fucking ass because then you're like painting like metallics on white or you want to maybe like darken them up and then put a bit of like dry brushy bit of metal over a black. Like, so you like, you feel like you're painting like, yeah, you, like you speed paint some stuff, but for armour and stuff, you feel like you have to sort of do more work than you would have done if it was black primer. Whereas yeah. these these just went on, and I found mm. when I was like coating on quite hard, it just went on really good, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I still wash it a bit with some nulm and stuff just to darken it up, but yeah, 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 it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, um, I feel like it's always easier to darken things and try to get things brighter. Usually, I mean, you could always just hit it with some wash first if you want to darken it more if it's annoying you. Um, oh, yeah. it's fine with the zenithal. I just could, I just could not no. paint over a pure white. Undercoat. I just hate that. Like I feel. Oh, like, pure white. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's fine with the zenith. Cool. It literally is yep. that. As long as there's little dark stuff in the shadows, I'm cool. <laughs> it oh, yeah, stops yeah. me being. Yeah. But yeah, years ago when I was a kid, and you just sprayed it white, and then it just looked like yeah, derpy. Yeah, um, I haven't used pure white either for yeah, yeah. a long time. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, I got a game in, and that's up on a battle report with Cam, who's our second newest patron <laughs> uh with his brats uh he ended up getting me um yeah i mean I, like i mean i won't talk through the game in massive detail but it was just um i tried the doom so the idea here was to try the doom seekers as well so it was a little bit of like the list that asb was playing because these outriders are pretty cool because they're like multi like they're uh, multi-shot three Mm. You can get prayers on them to get a multi wound too. Um, as long as you're not moving, once they move, they pretty can't hit the side of a barn door. But yeah, um, with 24 inch range and Vanguard, you can move up and then at least for two turns, pretty much stand in the same spot and shoot at things. Um, yeah. and they're pretty cool, like you know. And then you've got a couple of different magic items, and they're blunderbuss thing in. Um, gets uh with the blunderbuss guy the champ he's got if you roll a hit it turns into d3 plus one so there's just like it feels like with empire yes it's underpowered but there's a lot of little things that have like armor bane and stuff so like it's almost like just trying to go through the list and the magic items and all that and try and just find every source of armor bane and all that sort of stuff so then when you're rolling those sixes it's actually turning into yeah. like pretty damaging stuff um and then over on the other side i had demi i mean these aren't great picks because I just took them, I think, just down the line, didn't I? Yeah. A demi, I took some demis and stuff. And the idea too, what I wanted to try to do here was actually think about fleeing and like, because um, I had two units of detachments and a little archer block and I really wanted to like, you know, make sure that I'd flee and get him in the middle of the field and then counter charge with demis and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I sort of did it here, but it was just... I rolled three when I fled, and so his dude still caught me. Um, and he did. He rolled twenty on a charge, so which was fine because then my oh. demi still did a counter charge, so it was fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't really get much more chance to do some of the other um, sort of fleas and stuff. The big issue I had here was the um, again griping. What I was griping about before was my steam tank went into these peggy pegs over here and only did like one wound on one guy and like just with the impact hits and i just oh, i don't know what it yeah. was i don't know if i rolled bad i can't remember and he 
put two on me. And so he actually pushed my guy back oh. and then just flew off. Um, and I, yeah. and, and like I said at the beginning of the podcast hours ago, my two doom seekers mercenaries, I rolled two ones to start the game. So they both started off the table as ambushes. I rolled four <laughs> for both of them. Um, my whole idea one was, for both. I know two <laughs> and it's on camera. You can see it. I rolled both ones. <laughs> And I had them in the middle of the table. I deployed them just forgetting about it. And I went, oh, shit, actually, I've got to roll for them. Because um, I yeah. thought I'll put them in the middle because that way there's a chance they'll get in combat somewhere. Because mm. I didn't want They'll be them involved in the game. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and anyway, they ended up the ambushing. The and I probably should have just put them back in the middle somewhere in hindsight. But the way this – when I brought them on in turn two, my, my steam tank had just charged the pegs. So I brought them on behind the pegs because I thought, this is good. I'm, surely my steam tank will do surely. some damage, push them back, and mm. then my doom seagulls will go on the back of them, just rip them one. And even if his uh, duke came in, I was like, oh, cool. I mean, I want these guys to die, so I don't care. I just want to see what they do. Mm. Um, but, yeah, no, his uh, pegs pushed my steam tank back, flew off, <laughs> and then his duke one shot at my steam tank and then flew <laughs> off. And so my doom seagulls wow. spent the whole turn just walking across the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Um, you know my pain. But having said that, and, as, and, you know, people have commented that, you know, this is a, you know, that's a tournament Bretonian army with, you know, two units of Pegasus and all this sort of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but it's actually funny. if that, I think if that steam tank had not done that, mm. it, you know, he might have lost that peg unit and then that's a different game. You know what I mean? Like, um I'm not saying it, you know, the Empire come out with a victory by any means or anything. I'm just saying, like, that's a massively different game if yep. the Doom Seekers do some damage. And then I think he probably would have to consider, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe not, like, either leaving the steam tank alone and flying mm. the Duke off and kill other stuff um, or just going, no, I will try to kill it, but I might have to also face the Doom Seekers. And I don't even know if the Doom Seekers kill him, but, I mean... He's not as defensive, I don't think. So maybe they do, you know. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's funny. It was a good game. I just feel like I want to try it again and just hopefully not have. I'm not saying it's a bad luck game. I just would like to see what the Doom Seekers do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot of points bad. just there, isn't it? Yeah. Two Doom Seekers, like yeah. How much are they each? About a hundred and something, but yeah, I the only dumb yeah. thing, yeah, I mean, you got to get your head around the fact that you want them to die. So for some reason, I put a toughness buff on them. Like I like the hate, I put the hatred thing, so they reroll. Yeah. I think you want them to do some damage as well, hopefully. Um, yeah. So I put the hatred one on them, and then one of them's got ASF because the idea originally was, yeah, march the dude up or fly him up with the demon spell right in the middle of his thing, right in front of a unit, and say, "Charge me!" Because I got ASF, I'm going to do some damage, <laughs> and then die. Yeah. That's what I wanted to do, um, but they didn't start on the table. Um, and yes. in hindsight, so the next army list I've done, I've kept some of that, but I've taken off like the toughness, and because if they get shot off, they get shot off, and I get the victory points. So yeah, good. Yeah, oh, right, yeah. so there you go. Those other guys that you get the victory points for if they die. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, why make them extra tough? Yeah. No, I know. I don't know why. I just thought of getting me across the board to try and, you know, fight, but then you, it takes yeah. a bit of, to get your head around yeah. and go, well, yeah, it's sort of like yeah, yeah. hopefully keep them as cheap in one sense, but if they are but, in combat, you still would like to take some people out with you, you know. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, no, fair point. Yeah. Fair point. Uh, but anyway, that's what I did. And uh, yeah, now them. I'm... Now I'm in this weird state where I'm like, I actually do like the like I like the I love the look of Empire on the board. And so what he's currently printing is two more Pegasus, some uh, uh knights, some wizards on horses, uh, and just some random stuff like that that I can play around with some different models. Oh, and one of the Highland demis, because I just want to see what it looks like next to the other ones and stuff. Because I got seven demis, but I'm like, the next army no, I have to bring two. You got seven? Four. Yeah. Oh. Two units of four. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry, I'll stop repeating everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I might even drop the friggin' steam tank and just go, bugger that. Two units of demis, couple of the, these knights, what I did with the knights, and I mean, tell me if I'm dumb or not, but I took stubborn and drilled on them. The whole idea being just go up, take a tank a charge, go stubborn, and then again, counter charge with the demis and the doom seekers. <laughs> like just use them as chaff in a way but chaff that probably doesn't die straight away because they've got pretty you know three up saves they yeah, yeah potentially hang around for one as long as they don't all die 
Mm. They're just going to just, you know, hopefully just at least fall back in good order and get in the yeah. way and then you can counter charge with something else. That was the idea, but I don't know. I yeah. think that would totally work. But yeah, I think if you had more demis on the field so you could counter charge more easily, you got more yes. options. I yes, think that 100%. Would... And, that's, and, and you can that's at least cool guarantee idea. the demi charge, whereas a steam tank, you're rolling random dice. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, guarantee it insofar as you, you can. And hence you can. why then I went, you know what, I would want some more demon with uh, demonology wizards running around to give these guys like faster movement or plus, well, imagine demis with plus one strength and toughness and plus one yeah. AP and like, they do some damage if, you, if yeah. you've got some of those no, spells would. off on them. Although one of them might be a self spell, I can't remember. Some of them. Are I think good. the flying ones foot only, isn't it? You have to be in the. Gear. Oh yeah, not the flying one. Sorry, not them. Because uh, I was there's just a thinking plus about one movement. Yeah. There's a plus one movement weapon skill and something else, and there's a strength one, toughness one. Yeah, there's a few like Buffy type things. Yeah, demonology um, is good. Yeah. Yeah. I almost I feel like with Empire, apart from the gun fly, line, but, is but, just yeah. lots of wizards and. Lots of these, yeah, demis and stuff, and just yeah, lots forget, of don't even have combat yep. characters. Like, just have, like, you get, you're not going to compete against a, yeah, dragon. So it's just like almost what about MSU, some, but not MSU, you know. Some nice big blocks of infantry with some, some, well, cool a dude has done that, and then he eventually on. just went, nah, it just didn't work. He tried it and eventually went, nah. And when I played more people, it just didn't work. So I don't know. Oh. But it's so classic Empire. I know. Yeah. Oh, well. Wait for the Arcane yeah, yeah. Journal. Yep, true. True. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's true. That's true. Surely there'll be something that... Surely. I have to wait. What? So wait. Four months, do you think? <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I'll just bring two cannons. That's all you need. Two or three shots. Dragon's gone. You know what? Someone said, was this? Oh, actually, it wasn't our patron. Someone said they would really hope that it brings out, like, I know it can't be exactly this, but like the Celestial Hurricaneum and the and the Luminarch, but as it's sort of like, geez, they had the, yeah. they had that axe thrower thing come out in the Arcane Journal and that wasn't law. It'd be cool if they could bring in some of those buff wagons because I think they were really. Yeah, cool. yeah, like and experiments. Plus, I have them. Or... Like, I'd like to use them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Or just rename it something else, look. Yeah, experimental. It was event, yeah, yeah. It was, came out of the elves were showing them how to build it, you know, like yeah, before it was it. a thing. Yeah. Before it was a thing. Yeah. Have you rebased much of your empire? No, none. So that's the it's, okay. that's hence why I was asking about the base stuff because I was like, I need oh, to redo it. Of course. It all, yeah. All right. Right. Even the steam job. tanks on the wrong base size. Oh. Like it's like oh. pretty much everything has to be rebased, but the demis. Oh, oh, that's that's a hard. And that's why I don't want to run two blocks of forty <laughs> up in here. Yeah, whatever I've got. So yeah, I mean, base adapters are fine. Yeah, but they don't. Yeah, it's not. They're annoying to use technically, and no. I, if I, you're I reforming, have, they're annoying. Yeah, yeah. If you're no, I want to have proper bases, and I'm, I'm I'm happy to redo it. I just want to do it in a more economical way, not 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 money wise, time wise, and just. Easy. To oh use. right, I'm like oh, doing paint. Yeah. No, yeah, not 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 cost wise. I don't care about that as much, but yeah. Cool. Anyway, mm. Josh, it's all on you, man. Josh, yeah. six cent no, time. Wait for this. This is, this is really, so we're going to round out the episode. I'm with sitting back. I've almost Josh's a bottle of red. Josh's. <laughs> Have you both been <laughs> drinking? What is this? Yeah. Can't you this tell? is usually the teetotaling podcast. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Andrew started it. Andrew started it. <laughs> what? What do you? What do you mean? What did you? Because he said like, he was getting a bottle of wine, and then I went, "Oh, I've got to get." Yeah, when I came drink. on, I had a bottle of. Oh, had... when you came on. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I wasn't going to drink, and then I saw Andrew. I drink. don't condone drinking. <laughs> I must admit. If I'd been part of that conversation, you may well have swayed me into this. Yeah. <laughs> into oh. this. Next time, next time. Yeah. Oh dear. But yeah. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll take out the end. So, um, yeah, we are now switching to Josh's six end segment for <laughs> the next <laughs> half an hour, <laughs> and probably take out the episode. So, if people don't want to listen to it. It's fine. We're probably not going to talk much else, you know. 
But yeah, right. so I spent a whole day playing good old Six Ed at uh, Cloak and Chopper that was run by um, Hugh Evans, a guy who won Uprising, which is the other Six Ed tournament I played back in March or so. Because um, I remember he won that, and then a few days later, it's like I'm gonna, I'm gonna do an, ep- I'm gonna do a tournament. Mm. So yeah, he, he ran it, and it was, it was good. So he just ran it at the gaming arena in in the North Melbourne, which is a venue I haven't been before, and it was actually really nice. Um, the tables were like sort of just above waist high, um, so yeah, they, they had little stools. As much. Yeah. So ergonomically, it was really comfortable. Yeah. All the tables had little shelves on each end, so you could put your armies or boxes and stuff that were like knee high. Um, and they had drink wow. drink cups like on the oh. top, so you had a, and on the top you've got like a six inch wide thing before you know on your side mm. of the table on each side of players table, so you've got like bought like space for everything. Yeah, that seems good. It was really good. I've How many a, tables can a... they set up then? We use probably ten percent of the room. More, more. That was probably. F- 50 or 60 tables in there. There was wow. a lot of tables. So you can see what I'm like talking about. Precedence for every every tournament from now on. You're Pretty right? much. If you're a TO like, listening to this and you don't do this, we're, no one's coming to your tournament. Yeah, so. That's right. Just kidding. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's that's right. That's way. <laughs> that's, we're still going to have ergonomic tables. You've got to have a bar. <laughs> yeah, stand up stand up desks. Like You, you should be able to sit at down and bar. everyone can run up. And then, everyone loves a bar. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. Um, but yeah, this this event. So it was it pre- pretty well. So I think you had twenty people sign up. I think you had a few dropouts, but on the morning. So I think it was sixteen Standard. people in the end, which is not yeah yeah sixteen. Though, Four out of twenty. That... Yeah, sixteen people. Yeah, that's pretty good. I was yeah. I was, I was betting twelve or thirteen to be honest. Mm. So yeah, I was surprised. Um, uh, although yeah, four out of twenty dropout is a pretty relatively high. Proportion. That is a high dropout rate, yeah. You know, um, you'd expect two or three out of forty, so that's yeah, mm. yeah, it was annoying. Um, but anyway, it was it was it was fine. I uh, the the event it was sort of like we had a few different scenarios going on. Um, uh, so, sorry, Josh, is this a one day? I yes. can't remember. Yeah, this is a one day. Yeah, yep, yep. <clears throat> um, so yeah, it was three games, two thousand points. Um, uh, it had hidden lists, which was a really, Ooh. a really cool way of doing it. I've never played in a, in a tournament before where you didn't spend the first five minutes explaining your lists. I mean, you could, you could explain the non magic items stuff, yeah. but, um, all the more intricate stuff that we usually spend a while ago. Okay. This one does that, does that, does that. You just didn't know what it was and it, mm. and it changes. And I mean, this is something that. It was interesting because it does change the the some of the relevance of a, of a magic items. If you if the opponent doesn't know you have this particular oh, yeah. thing, you're going to unleash it. You know some some of the stuff actually. Yeah, it really changes the dynamic a lot. Um, although I feel like in in six sig, I don't know if it'll work as well in the old. I feel like there's a lot more sort of things that you could get hit by Trick people. That you don't yeah. expect. Yeah, yeah, in the yeah. old world. Um, whereas a six, it maybe feels a little bit more forgiving. Um, so my first up game, I was actually drawn against uh, Will, um, who was the slow grow. <laughs> I got drawn. I got drawn against one of my slow grow guys. Have you played? You didn't play him though, or have you? I've never played him. Oh, okay, well that worked out well. <laughs> well I've never <laughs> played him, which was great. Um, so he's he brought his wood elves, um, uh, which was. I think he had so a tree man, a block of eternal guard, some wild riders um, with a BSB in it. Um, he had an eagle, some some hawks, uh, uh, dryads, um, and a couple of unit of archers. Um, and the this one was, I think, it was a central objective where it was a bit of a weird one uh, where the central objective you control it if you have the most unit strength you know within six inches but a wizard's count is in unit strength 10 for it um oh. because it's an orb of power um and you get the you only get the you only score you get 200 points at the end of turn two and 100 points at the end of turn four um and then the person who has it in the game you don't get any points for it but you get uh, the orb of lesser power enchanted item that you can give to a character 
that lets you mm. see magic items within 12 <clears throat> inches for the rest of the day kind of thing. Oh, which is, wow. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. It's yeah. almost like narrative. Yeah, it is a little bit narrative. <clears throat> it was a little bit narrative. Um, and I was running my Kaldus Lanesh. So I don't think I've really gone through my list for my 2K games on this podcast ever, really. So I had an anointed, which is the combat guy that the Kaldus Lanesh particularly have that, you know, it's like a demonic com combat guy on a 20 mil base that he can also be level two. So I had him on level two on Slanesh. Um, he had a great weapon with always strikes first. Um, and he had a pendant that lets him get an extra attack if he takes a wound. Um, uh, I had two level twos, one on Slanesh Law, the other one on Shadows Law. The Shadows one mainly to try to, because there's a level one spell, the Cedar Shadows, which I could potentially make that anointed fly out of the unit um, at any <laughs> point, which. Uh, Sort of worked, sort of didn't. I'll go through that in a minute. Um, then I had the Cold One Knights with a war banner, um, the Devoted that the Anointed sits in um, with a banner of murder, which gives an extra D6 inches on a charge, which in the concept of hidden lists was a nice surprise from time to mm. time because people were not expecting uh, infantry to suddenly be charging like 13 inches, you know. Mm. Um, uh, although I kind of almost feel like the the, the thought of that threat in, in an open list tournament is almost more worthwhile because it just just has this oh, huge range yeah, yeah, where yeah. you know it's they could charge <clears throat> six inches yeah. and you're terrified of that and so it almost helps you dictate play a bit more anyway i don't know it's 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 just interesting different the way of thinking about it um yeah. i've got i've got the unit of five mounted demonets um two chaos spawns um some furies some shades and two bolt throwers um the spawns did pretty well in this game. So um, deployment, all the different scenarios had 12-inch battle line deployment. It was more just the different little things that were going on. So yeah, as I said, this one had a central objective. Um, uh, so most of my deployments were fairly similar. I had the devoted with the anointed in the center. Um, usually put the two mages near there so they sort of had some protection because I, I didn't really put them in a unit. Um, uh, I had the chaos knights sort of centrally nearby as well um then the spawns on either side of them um then going further towards the flanks i would have the the mounted demonets out on one far flank um the repeated crossbows wherever i could fit them um uh, and the furies on the other side um uh, and the crossbowers or whatever they is that what they were the repeated crossbows yeah repeated the line of crossbows repeated right crossbows. Yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Did I mention them in my list? No, I didn't. No, I didn't mention them. Yeah, so they're, they're, my, they're my third core unit. Because um, shades can be core, which is funny in mm. uh, cult. Um, so with the the map, there was a big hill pretty much in, close to the middle, um, and I put my cold one nights behind that hill. Um, he deployed his tree man. You can't quite see it in this photo. I wonder if I can see it better. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's a, yeah. Oh, hold on. That's a better photo. Where's this tree man? You can't quite make it out in the photo. It's sort of, there's all these hawk wings and so there's a tree man in front yeah, of yeah. it. <laughs> um, uh, so he had his tree man and the block of eternal guard sort of centrally. He had the, the uh, war hawks and his eagle sort of behind them. Um, uh, then he had these archers either side of them. He had he had a unit of six war dancers, um, you know, eight wild riders. Um, one of his other Archers wrap on a hill across from my bolt thrower and the repeater crossbows. Um, uh, and he had the dryads on, on the, over on the far side, sort of opposite the um, mounted demonets. Um, so one of the big things I had was when I deployed it, I did, my, my head I was like, I don't really want the Cal Cold One Knights opposite the tree man because I just don't want him charging the tree man because I'll charge the tree man, I won't do any wounds, he'll hold, and then they'll be stuck and then yeah. they'll probably die. Um, unfortunately, that's exactly what happened because I think he ended up deploying the treatment after my <clears> cold <throat> one nights, um, yeah. just because I had fewer <laughs> drops. Um, so I did end up. I had to make a decision about do I put them on the hill or not. Um, so I pushed them up on over the hill um, in the end because I was just like I, I do want to uh, approach him, um, and I pushed the spawn up because they're three to six movement and they're actually really mobile. I quite like them. Um, uh, and I probably wasn't as aggressive with the devoted as I could have been, but I guess I was a bit worried that the well, his warhawk riders would fly over me and get into my um, uh, bolt throwers. Um, yep. 
Now, what happened in this game was I did end up charging the tree man with the cold one nights because I felt like I had no choice. He killed... I fluffed all my attacks. He killed two cold one nights. He lost combat by one because I had the war banner. And charging down a hill. I don't know. I didn't even include that. That was a good <laughs> one. But I, 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 <clears throat> I outnumbered him. Um, yeah. Standard war banner and he did two wounds yeah so i won by one i even had a museum so it was, it was a draw i were one by one um he f- he fails the <laughs> break check oh. it's got a bsb though yeah. yeah rolls at 11 again so he fails it a second time <laughs> so he fled and then my cold one does run the tree man down it's like wow the one thing you didn't so want ridiculous the one like, thing yeah. i didn't want and oh, yeah. then, and then awesome. it turns out to be to be um, funny, the, the one of the other swing things that happened was that his um unit you know, of wild riders uh with a BSB had the on the other yeah, side, the bottom of the screen there. So he yeah. had the um I forget the name of it, but it was an item that lets him teleport from a forest to another forest. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, so he's actually gone across the other yeah. side. Now he sort of I we talked about the spawns and the fact that they can go any direction mm. multiple times, and he sort of when he did this. He probably didn't. He sort of forgot about the spawn, basically. It's pretty um, far away. Well, by the picture, it looks. It's not far that away. far it's, away. Yeah, it's, right. it's is it like twelve that, inches or ten or something? It was probably. Maybe. I think it was not even that. I think it was like ten yeah. and a half inches away. Oh, okay. okay. Um, Three yeah, six, okay. Yeah. And I rolled like a thirteen, and yeah, yeah. the spawn <clears throat> manages to go straight into the flank of the yeah. um, wild riders. Wild that wild combat, riders. I think I, char- I killed two on the charge. They hold. I move the the mounted demon that's down to in position to do a rear as well because i knew he couldn't reform he was sort of stuck yeah. there yeah. um uh, even if he won combat against the spawn which i was i was sort of expecting he might do they still wouldn't be able to move um the mounted demon that's never 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 got to do that charge because uh the following turn the spawn kills a, another like three um wild riders and they broke and fled and the spawn kills them <laughs> <laughs> oh dear um uh meanwhile like on the other side my bolts had actually caused a paycheck on his archers they'd actually played off the board um yep. uh, his warhawk riders had come in centrally and then been forced to flee a charge from my devoted so they'd end up being back on his side of the table so we hadn't yep. really got to my bolt throwers which was nice um i did end up charging the anointed because i i did the failed charge on the warhawk riders with the devoted and then because they found the charge they'd moved up for five inches um uh, and then because i had the state of shadows i actually decided to charge the anointed out of the unit into the war dancers um yeah which i felt like was a reasonable thing to do because he's got five attacks you know he's high strength um yeah. high initiative and you know he's got enough armor it's like a four up armor save with a five up ward um but then he fluffs his attacks i think the first two rounds i got two hits through and so the war dancers, it was kind of hair raising because first up they did the four up ward save. Um, yeah. Uh, and then I don't think I got a wound through. I think I had to take a break check because they outnumbered me, which I saved finally. Second round, they they took um, killing blow. So I, I roll my hit to hit. I miss all these three, all five three up threes to hit, just miss. Um, and then he's got, then he actually gets through multiple hits with killing like with potential for yeah. killing blow. Yeah. Uh, and he rolls like two, three, four, and five. And I'm like, oh yeah. my God. Thank God. <laughs> like, <laughs> that God was terrifying. Because this this 380 point character was all, was about to just be killing blow by the body arch by the body yeah. war dancers because he just couldn't couldn't hit anything. Um in the next round I actually got my spawn in um and then he finally started doing some some damage. Um so they ended up I ended up winning that combat. Um, now, um, what else happened? So, um, the, the Colburn assassins took through the tree man, they ran over, over ran into the archers. Um, the dryads came into their flank, they started killing them. Um, the devoted had gone into his eternal guard, um, uh, with the furies in the side. Um, the devoted ended up breaking that unit, um, running straight through, um, uh, the guys that had countercharged the Colburn knights and sort of clean all oh, of that yeah. whole thing up so it ended up being quite a strong wind in my favor mm. that one i think i won 19-1 um 
um, uh, which was mainly from yeah those two points. I think I was really lucky with the failed rerollable sub and eight. Dreaming. Yeah. Where the Warhawks go? Are they still down the back somewhere? What happened with the Warhawks is they actually moved up onto the hill and I got, got nailed shot by, <laughs> by Shades, oh, yeah, yeah. And, there they are. and Triple <laughs> okay, Trolls. <I> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So, see, yeah, yeah, they lost five wounds in a single turn and he was down to one wound and he was oh, yeah, damn. They ended up, they ended yep. up disappearing. Um, so, yeah, yeah. It's no way to keep people playing six, Ed, uh, Josh, by 19 wanting them. <laughs> You're a bully, Josh. <laughs> Look, it, like the tournament as, you, as you probably see, like I won that game. A lot of it was just ridiculous dice and a lot of fortunate luck. Um, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. But yeah, look, it it does change a bit. So the second game was up against it was another Wood Elf player actually. Wood Elf, um, J, oh, yeah. J Code. I was gonna say you're playing at AOS um, there. The hell? Yeah, it felt like AOS. Man. He had a lot of uh, uh, looks... speech. He had a lot of yeah, uh, wow. skirmishes. He had three units of dryads, a big unit of thirteen war dancers as well. So he had four skirmishing units. Um, uh, he had, I think, he also had three units of glade guards. So he had six core units in this list. Mm. Um, really, not many characters. I think he only had two little characters, and that was it. So it was interesting, like very opposite to the old world in some ways. <laughs> this game, mm. like, there's so mm. much, so oh, many cool. troops on the board. This is two thousand points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, he had a little unit of wild riders. He also had a tree man, um, uh, and yeah, I think that was no idea. Yeah, he has, I think he had some hawks as well. Um, he spent. This was a much more cagey affair. Um, uh, we didn't really get into grips with each other very much. The these the scenario with this one was again a really. This one was actually more ridiculous actually, because um, there were three pieces of terrain in the middle of the board. Um, where at the end of your your turn, if you if you're in the that piece of train, you get fifty points. So for each piece of train you hold, you get fifty points at the end of each of your turns after you know from turn two onwards. Oh, each. But yeah, yeah. So you could potentially get for one hundred fifty points at That's the end a lot of, of each of your five turns. Yeah. you know, so um, seven hundred fifty points back. So yeah, quite a lot of points. Um, yeah. but. But while you're in the while you're controlling that piece of terrain, while you're touching the terrain piece, you suffer from animosity because <laughs> it's it's the ruined temple of Gork and or Mork is the um, scenario. <laughs> so you had to roll for animosity, it's and there was good. there were multiple. It didn't really happen. Not, like I don't think any of we didn't fail any animosities, fortunately. Yeah. Um, but one other table had some pleasure seekers fail their animosity. Um, and then roll the is it the one that you charge off your own mm -hmm. unit and he charged it to some other demonettes and like <laughs> took them off the table and like just ruined his game. <laughs> That's so, um, so ridiculous. Another another table, I think uh, one of them failed animosity like four times in a row and the unit just <laughs> couldn't do anything though. <laughs> so yeah, it's sort of like it's gone a little uh, bit, but yeah. Oh, like yeah. Well, yeah. This is this is the old animosity, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The old, the old punishing one. <laughs> None of this impetuous. Um. So yeah. So, I mean, it was funny having to deal with that kind of thing. Um. I think the rule was if you already had animosity, you would then also suffer from stupidity as well. Yeah. <laughs> so like, if you're walking complex, I was like, yeah, because otherwise oh. it wouldn't affect you. Yeah. So then you get stupidity on top of that. Um. And if you already have both, then they're in their happy place, according to the yeah. uh, players pack. Place. Yeah. Um, uh, so this game, as I said, it was quite cagey. He spent most of the game of trying to avoid the bolt throwers with the tree man. I didn't, in retrospect, the first game, I didn't really try to shoot the tree man with my bolt mm -hmm. throwers. I was more focusing on trying to um, get rid of um, archers, really. Um, so archers, I think I should have yeah. been trying to shoot, shoot the tree man because I mean, yeah, a single bolt. You know, can do a is strength six damage. and then he's tough six is he or yeah yeah okay. but it's plus one to hit though so you know yeah, you're more likely to hit it and oh, then yeah. 50 50 chance to actually get the wound it. through yeah. um you ignore the armor save he's got a five up ward because he's a tree man and then it's d3 wounds so you know there's reasonable chance you've got it yeah five or six i can't remember five, six, um but you you know reasonable chance you're going to take him down quite a bit and then once once he's lost half his wounds he's a lot less mm. scary because he just yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it wouldn't take much to get the take the other wounds off. 
Um, so this game, as I said, it was it was quite cagey. So the main, most of the action happened on one flank where I had the Cold One Knights and the Mountain Demonettes kind of working together. I did get Frenzy off on the Cold One Knights and then they failed their stupidity multiple times. <laughs> then I think they failed the animosity once too because they were on a hill that was the one of the, one ones. Of the um yeah. one of the ones that was doing it. So one turn, I think they failed the animosity and then stupidity, and they just like could not get into the combat. Um so the mounted demonets managed to hit um some, one of the units of dryads that was one of the other um objectives. Um but they I think they'd already lost a couple of their number from shooting, so there was only a few left. Um and then the the warhawk riders ended up coming into their flank and sort of overrunning. Um the cold one us then did go into the the dryads and take them out at least. Um, uh, but then he was sort of hoping the Warhawks would actually have overrun into where my wizard was sitting, sort of 15, 16 inches away at the oh, central yeah. of my board. Um, but they, they only overran like 12 or so, and it just left them in a nice situation where they, they were actually just absolutely peppered with magic missiles, two bolt throwers, and repeated crossbows at short range. Yeah. Um, so... <clears throat> The there wasn't a huge amount else that happened. So the spawn ended up going into the um war dancers in this in the center of the board. Um uh, my devoted and anointed really didn't do very much in this game. They kept reforming to face different threats. So they reformed to face the, the Warhawk Rhinos when they overran um through the mount of demonettes because I wanted yeah. to to potentially charge if I needed to or get off the the whip um slanesh spell which is a dc 26 hits um but then yeah they ended up killing them so then he moved his tree man up to the other side of this impassable train that was next to the devoted so then i reformed them around to face um that unit again i don't have any more photos of it um uh and then you know following turn the the those dryads at the, at the other side of the board they've come around towards my yep. um bolt throwers because they start threatening the other side, I end up reforming the devoted again to so you can face them and, and shoot at that. <laughs> so I kept just mm -hmm. swimming around. Um, there wasn't much more killing though. Like we, we ended up being really cagey. He didn't really want to engage me. Um, and yep. then I think we got to I can't remember it was, it was turn five or so, and then that was sort of we sort of just called it there. Um, uh, but he'd actually done a lot better job of getting the objective. So he'd had, whereas I often only it. had one uh, objective mm. and most of the game he'd had two um and yep. then he actually picked up three out of the four table quarters as well which are each worth 100 points so it was actually yep. quite massive so he ended up he ended up winning 12 8 in the end um uh but yeah it was it was quite a quite a cagey game i felt in retrospect i probably should have been in the end no nah, so what happened with those war dancers is they did end up killing that that spawn um yep. my cold one nights overran um they lost a few of their number to shooting. Yeah, because there's, oh, okay. there's some, actually some Glade Guard in the far corner there that moved up and then shot short range for string four shots and moved yeah, okay. a couple of knights. Um, they failed another stupidity, moved seven inches up right next to the war dancers, and then the war dancers flame charged them and took them off. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, okay. it was pretty disastrous. If they hadn't found that stupidity, they might have been able to charge in and do something. Yeah. Um, oh, that was me pressing that. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's that's sort of the angle of it. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, yeah, I had the option of charging the war dancers potentially with a flying charge off the anointed, and I was like, I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> so I just, <laughs> so I just decided, and that block was too big anyway. Like I, I got a pit of shades off on them, which is a weird rule, the spell in six ed, because it's like under the thing you get like er everything gets a. The strength three hit, and then you on a on a one to three, the unit is only at half movement for that turn or something, which is ridiculous for a spell that's eleven plus to cast. Anyway, um, so last game, um, I'm actually feeling. By the way, oh, I'm actually that is a good to tower tired. though. Is that the same tower that? That's not your tower. No, 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 it's not my tower. Is, is oh, no, it's a cool tower. This is usually good. terrain. At the, um, yeah. uh, the gaming arena. Um, so I was up against Andrew Crosby in this one, um, who had brought Balthazar Gelt to the table. Say, is that Empire? Oh. I'm trying to work it out. He had, he's got like the fourth ed steam tank from when he was oh, yeah, like 12 years old, he said. Yes. And the OG that. Balthazar Gelt. That was the metal um, one. So, yeah, extremely vintage um, mm. Empire army. Uh, 
Do I have any titles? So yeah, I don't think I have many photos of this one. Um, so I think this this is probably the the game where I realized it. I find I I how used I am to playing Bretonians. <laughs> that I don't need to think that much, almost like, like I was using a lot of brain power in this list because it's 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 very you know there's a lot of movement, a lot of magic options, a lot of different things you can do, um, and I had to think about it a lot. Whereas I find with the Bretonians because I've played them so much, it's a lot of instinctual stuff that I do, or yep. it's just like gut feeling almost, you know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the third game I was like I didn't really have a plan in my head. I hadn't really thought about you know what specific threats were. Yeah, I had the steam taken. I was trying to work out the rules for that, which you know, in six set are pretty, uh, oh. pretty long because <laughs> yes, we got the twenty five hull points. With Andrew on it, I was like, oh, you've God, got the that's... the hard and the soft, and then you've yeah. got to work out how many wounds you do. Do we you got yeah, it's a, different if you hit it from uh, the breeze as well. Plus D six, yeah. plus wounds cause minus yeah. eight or ten, and it's yeah, <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> and it's not in the then, army book, and you got this extra PDF. Uh, isn't it? It's in a different thing isn't it yeah it's in the annual 2003 which i've got i've got the annual that's fine um but yeah yeah i know it's not in the audio book itself um then then it's got balthazar gelt which again is another character it's like it's got all the metal it's got every spell in metal um and it's got this cool staff that you can you can put any dice up or down by one when you cast your dispelling which is uh is really cool little thing um so his list Otherwise, it had two units of pistoliers, one with a fire mage level two, so next to one pistolier. He had a cannon. Um, he had a big unit of sword mass, sword, sword, swordsman swords. with a BSB in it. Um, a detachment of uh, other swords, not a great sword, it's just swordsman, just like oh, regular okay, swordsman. swordsman. Oh, yeah. um, and then another unit, a little swordsman next to him, um, and, a, and another detachment of um, little a five in, five men um, bowmen. Um, he had a unit you know, of ten uh, hand gunners. Um, uh, you know, a 10 halberders just by themselves next to the steam tank, and then on the other flank, he'd put um, a big unit of flagellants oh, right out on the flank. Yeah, right on the and flank. he did that because the scenario for this one, I'll spend a bit of time discussing this because this is a ridiculous scenario. So, the scenario was there's <laughs> uh, objective on, on the, the middle of the short edge of the table, um, on both sides, called the sewers. So, there's a sewer on each side of the table. Yep. From turn two onwards, just before the end of each player's turn, if they control one of those locations, um, and you've got to control it by having a unit of unit strength five or greater within a foot of the tunnel, they can attempt to investigate the tunnel. If they do so, they roll a d6, and you know, and if you get a six up on turn two, five up on turn three, or four up on turn four or thereafter, you've successfully investigated the tunnel. Um, if you've when you've when you have successfully done that, you find a fell blade in the tunnel, <laughs> and then you can pick a a model in the unit that investigates the the, the the sewers to 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 wield the fell blade. And the fell blade is as it is in the Skaven book, which is mm-hmm. you know it sets your strength to, to ten. Each unsaved yep. wound is is d six wounds, and you roll a dice at the end of your turn on a on a three yeah. effect. On a one or two, you take a wound with all other saves. <laughs> But then other models can pick up the spell bait and that type of thing. Um, if you hold the spell bait at the end of the game, it's worth 200 victory points. And if you're controlling the sewer where the spell bait was found at the end of the game, it's also worth 200 victory points. So that's why you put the, the um, flagellants right out on the flank. Because obviously flagellants yep. should not be out on a flank normally. Yeah. Um, so he was actually playing to the objective, whereas I was sort of not. <laughs> I sort of <laughs> put everything essentially and just was like, uh, whatever. Um, res- and he had the pistolies on the other far flank, on, far- on the right out on the other side. Um, so yeah, he was sort of playing together, I think. Whereas opposite his pistolies, because yeah, he had put both those units next to each other with the level two fire mage. I had just had the furies, um, had the shades deployed, sort of scouting behind a piece of impassable, and I had yeah. um, the spawn, uh, one of the spawns there. Um, that's so, man. I did not have a plan to deal with that flank, unfortunately. Um, it was quite disastrous. I'll go through that in a minute. So I had the devoted directly across from his block of swordsmen with the other detachments. I had my cross Peter crossbows opposite his hand gunners. I had the cro- uh, cold one knights opposite the steam tank and the halberders, and I had mount demoness opposite the um, the flagellants. Um, so that flank where the pistoliers were essentially melted the mm-hmm. everything I had on that flank very quickly. 
<laughs> so I sort just of from the shots and the fireballs or whatever. And just... Well, I got first turn, and I probably should have mm. prioritized shooting at them with the ball throwers because I actually mm. yeah. I actually went against the steam tank, which I actually took five hull points of the steam tank um, with the ball throwers, but. I probably should have tried to whittle down the the pistoliers um, because yeah they they went up. Um, I think the fire mage also bl- I think the fire mage blasted the furies off with the fiery fiery blast, um, and then one of the the pistoliers just just um, light, vaporized the shades, um, yeah. and the cannon took off the spawn. In retrospect, I probably should have hidden the can the spawn behind the big piece of impassable. Um, but the oh, yeah. yeah, he just he just guessed the 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 can like the the range nicely, and it just hit the spawn and took the spawn off. And I'm like, damn, because I was hoping, there, yeah, I was using, oh, I was God. really my plan like when I saw them rush up on there, it's like, oh, it's okay. I'm pretty sure I can just move a spawn into that pistolier block, and then mm. you know just tie them up and probably take them out. Um, but then when the, when, the, when I got cannoned off, I was like. Shit. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> I really, I really wasn't. Th- I hadn't identified the threat of the cannon as yeah. being something that's perfectly able to just take a spawn off relatively easily. You hadn't, you hadn't yeah. faced one all game, all tournament. <laughs> it's just what else? <laughs> I don't think I'd faced. I can't remember facing Empire in Six Head. To be quite honest, yeah, I don't remember yeah. playing against him. Um, uh, the other problem mistake I made was I wasn't use I wasn't being aggressive enough with the devoted block, so I sort of I, I shifted them up. Um, but I mean, I have quite a few magic missiles. They're all relatively short range, though, um, uh, and I've got a fair bit of other shooting. But it is very fragile, my army. Mm. It's fast moving yeah. and fragile, and I need to be using that mobility. Get more. in there quicker, because um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I I move them up, but not far enough that I. I couldn't really charge charge with him in my second turn. <sighs> like I had, I was thinking, do I declare a charge anyway and just hope I might roll high on the banner of murder? But I wish I wasn't even sure it was it even within sixteen inches. So I was kind of like, oh, look, I'll just move them up further. Yeah. Um, uh, the the spawn ends up charging the steam tank by our second stop spawn. Sorry, on the far side of the board, so it ended up does end up going to the steam tank. Yeah, does pretty well against the steam tank. So. I think he takes a wound off the steam tank. The next turn, the steam tank tries to shoot with his cannon, misfires, loses nine hull points off the misfire. Oh. Just two d six hull points lost. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and then the following turn, my mounted demoness had moved up in front of the flagellants, and then sort of like I was kind of like, do I want to go in this flagellants with mounted demoness? No. Nah. So I just fast capped around them. And then they ended up charging into the steam tank in the flank, and then yeah, ended up taking out the 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 steam tank itself. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't quite overrun because of the way the steam tank is and the way the spawn is. Like they just ended up clipping the spawn. Um, yeah. Once they'd taken out the the steam tank, and obviously once you win combat, you only overrun in six ed if you've charged the if turn. You've charged, yeah, yeah. Because that you know that makes sense thematically, makes sense right? For the rule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, by the way, I was reliving your um, story from Castle Assault, Gobbo, and mm, that thing which where one? you tried to double charge the ca- the dragon and Shari into the flank of the, the grave guard, failed one the dragon's charge, had the chariot go into the side, and then the grave guard killed the chariot, they overrun straight forward, and then drilled reform and charge into your massive poison block. Do you oh, remember that? I think yeah, it was like game yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, it was sort of like, yes. It was, was like, like, yes. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> I was looking confused there for a second. Yeah, I was trying to remember which one that was, but yes, you're right. Yeah, I yeah. Oh, that man. was annoying. Yeah, it was just like I couldn't. Yeah, looking yeah. back on that was crazy. Um. Anyway, so uh, I I'm taking out the same tank. The flagellants end up take, getting the fell blade and getting that whole objective, and I just like can't deal with it anymore. Um, I moved the devoted up. They ended up getting a charge on the. The detachment that flees, and then I, yeah. because you you can't, I was kind of redirecting to the big block, but then it turned out that oh, I didn't think you it was quite a, a valid charge. But then yeah. we sort of worked out that with wheeling, it would have been a valid charge to charge been, the main block. So it. then I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't reform. So I was like, shit. But he fled, but he only fled six inches, and then I was like, well, I've got the banner of murder anyway, so I'm just going to roll this extra dice. Oh look, I'm actually charging thirteen inches, and I catch your block anyway. <laughs> so. <laughs> 
Um, and then I actually ran so far. I was actually right over in front of the cannon, and then uh, I ended up having to take out the cannon. Now, not before, not before the the pistoliers had wheeled right round. Um, I had a bit of a standoff with my two majors, where my majors had gone hard at trying to um, blast them off the board. Um, managed to take out one of the full units of um, pistoliers. Left the mage alive, and then the other pistolers came up, and they ended up just yeah burning them both. Um, and then they ended up doing a bit of damage to the anointed and the devoted as well. So ended up losing yeah they, they, they those both those units survived the anointed and the devoted, but they were below half strength, so you ended up picking up quite a few victory points from that. Yeah. Um, uh, my coal ones didn't really do a huge amount this game. They ended up charging the the handgunners eventually. That are usually mainly I ended up whittling them down with the frenzy spell. That managed to get D6 string three hits off every turn. Um, yeah. uh, and the and the crossbows. Uh, but yeah, that's all they really did in the end. So I didn't really have much of a plan for the for the cold one nights to really charge much in the end. Like just mm. where I put them, they just didn't have a good target. I didn't really put them in the in the, in the steam tank. And uh yeah. man, it was just it was just a game where I didn't even put the friend I had I had I had multiple um, copies of Frenzy, and normally my plan is to make them frenzied. I did that the the first game, but it didn't even occur to me to do that this game. Like mm -hmm. I just wasn't like I didn't have any yeah. particular plan. Um, so I ended up losing this one as well. So fourteen six or so, just with all the extra um, objective points on top of yeah. um, the guys I'd lost. Um, uh, so yeah, it was a it was a fun game though. Balthazar Gelt was interesting. Just he's so mobile. He's got a three up ward against mo like missiles and stuff. I mean, I wasn't really going to try and shoot at him. Um, and he's got you know a lot of options because he's got the whole law of metal. Um, but he's worth four hundred seventy points. That's that's I think that's why his army is relatively small for an empire yeah. said army. Um, <clears throat> what does metal do against your army? Like what's <clears throat> not a huge amount. It was mainly the like the buffs. Or how, yeah, how mate, there, there is a magic there. missile that he, that I think it ignores. Um, like the 2d6 strength 4 hit one. Yeah. There's one that you can get rid of weapons entirely. And there's another ah, one right. that yep. you you do a wound that's this, that's buffed by the higher the armor save is as well. Yeah. Um, so there's a few things like that. But there wasn't much. I probably I only had Cold One Knights. So it was probably the only thing in the army that yeah. had high enough armor to that's really be thought. worried about it. Yeah. Um, uh, and really, the the mounted demonets were fortunate. I at one point I had to use five dice to dispel the two d six missile, magic missile, because those girls, like as soon as they hit by it, so a two d six magic missile, the the whole unit just just disintegrates. Yeah. So I managed to protect yeah. them um, pretty well. Um, uh, but yeah, I think when I I'm when I'm going to redo this list at some point. I am. I'm going to try to get some dark riders in there, and I want to put one of the the sorceresses. I think in that unit, like mount her up, just because those two sorceresses on foot by themselves are so they just static. Don't get enough. Yeah, and they've got they a lot of very any... short range magic missiles. And they just yeah. get in. Stuck. And that's um, why you need to always be in the middle with them as well, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's flank harassing. What would have you yeah. done different if you knew if you played this scenario right? We've just like gone hard on one side anyway and just gone bugger it and just take that one. And even if he takes the other one, like, because it's not like your army is very big either. Like, it's not. No. Yeah. I think that's probably what I should have done is at least try to make sure that I held one flank because at least that way it's a 50 50, right? So, because yeah, the way the scenario works, yeah. there are two entrances to the sewer, but as soon as the fell blade's found, yeah, only got, that entrance yeah. is worth victory points as well oh, as the fell yeah. blade. So, so if you, you hold the other one, on the other side, yeah, right. if you hold the other one, but you don't get the fell blade, then that objective point, you don't get anything yep. for holding yep. that side at all anyway. Um, yep. But mate, I, I probably would have been better, well, better served at least taking that chance than just yep. essentially sort of ignoring it, which not, well, I should case, have. I just didn't do anything. I just basically yeah, tried yeah. to take out his army and hope that <laughs> you know that I could do enough damage to to account for the lack of um, objective points, which is probably yeah. the wrong way to playing it, you know. Um, uh, and yeah, I, I think I the pistol is, I mean, pistol is to have a big reputation in six ed, and I I didn't do enough to try to um temper that threat, um, you know, when I was choosing what targets to shoot at early on and that type of thing. And I think I didn't have enough on that side to really stop them from just mowing down everything, but they're just hard to stop, you know, they can they mm, march up yeah. six inches and then they just you know, unle unload 
I'm all this hot lead. Um, which for my army being so, I mean, it's mobile, but it's very vulnerable to that kind of shooting. Um, yeah. So it's yeah, it's quite a scary proposition. So it's one of those ones where yeah, I think I've just got to if I if I got some multi shot bolt throwers off on it and at least taken a few off, uh, maybe got the frenzy spell on them so that he's taking D six three three hits every player's turn would have helped as well just to whittle them right down. Um, yeah. But yeah, because uh, those, those are probably the main threats really. Um, those those and maybe the steam tank I guess or the just the other cannons like his other blocks just aren't doing very much. Um, nah. The sword masters and stuff, they're really not scary whatsoever. Even those with a BSB in there, it really doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, I probably should have focused on just trying to take out those mobile threats that have got shooting. Um, and then sort of, yeah. Anyway, that's, mm. yeah, it's it's interesting. It's the first tournament I've been to, guys, since like maybe five years that I haven't taken Bretonians. Yeah, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Total opposite. Uh, of me, so yeah, <laughs> we chop and change. Um, he's like yeah. a underwear, and then you, you just stay on there. I just, years. I just love playing with Um yeah. So yeah, so we ended up coming eighth out of seven, out of sixteen or seven. I think it was sixteen players. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Tom Clare. So his Beast of Chaos army came first. He actually got sixty points out of sixty, which is wow. absolutely ridiculous. Mm. And then. And then he he's actually keen to run another six head event um, early next year. It's almost yeah, like right. everyone who wins a tournament is like, I'm going to mm. run another event. Yeah, they go, this is um, this game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Until they lose and then they, you don't never hear from Yeah, them that's now. right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, yeah, that was, yeah, there seems to be, yeah, I don't know what's going on with the local Melbourne community because we got that. And then the guy that ran this tournament suddenly he's like, wants, he wants to start a six head slow grow out of house, out of, out of game, out of venue as well. And yeah. it's like all this stuff is happening, and I'm like I just don't, I just don't quite get my head around it. Because mm. um, uh, there are events. There was, you know, there is now a, a page for Gathering Darkness Two, which is happening second of yeah. November. Um, mm. Although interestingly, they've got the same terrain players pack, which I was a bit disappointed about. Like I'm like, oh no, they've got the same symmetrical terrain on it. Oh uh, like, yeah, on, yeah, guys, I don't want that again. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, so Travis Kennedy, who was another one of my slow growers, he came second. He brought or an Orion list, Wood Elves Orion, sorry, Orion list. Yeah. Um, nice. character, which was fun. And then Andrew Crosby, the guy who played Empire, he actually came third in the end. So That's um, nice. uh, now the best painted, I'll go through this because I want to go through it. So there was actually a really cool um, pirate themed ogre army list where the guy, the, um, I forget who, who won actually. Who won? Is that great and great and price? I think um, he freehanded all these um, tattoos and stuff, and it was looking amazing. Um, oh, yeah, I actually sweet. won coolest army though, so at least I hey, could get one cool. little painting prize going yep. on. So just for all the pinks and stuff, because um, it was the first time I'd really used this army, you know, yeah. as a full army yeah. in sort of public outside the slow grow. Um, so yeah, I was, I was I was happy with that at least. Um, but yeah, so I think that's. Um, it, I one one other little random story. Um, ben Krushkaf was telling me that the first game he was played because he's played a lot of the old world before. He was like, oh, I don't want to play this anymore. Um, mm. He was measuring. He was moving his keeper secrets around, and he was measuring wheels for it. And it wasn't until like the second game where he realized, <laughs> oh yeah, I don't need to be measuring wheels for this uh, thing in six. <laughs> uh, that's funny. He was uh, so annoyed at himself. Yeah. Oh dear. But yeah, that's the little anecdote to, to wrap it off. <laughs> <sighs> so yeah. Cool. Oh, well, that's that's, that's good, Josh's man. six head corner. <laughs> yeah, that's the topic. That's the uh, segment. Oh good man. Cool. That's that good. was a long one. We've been, we've been oh, it's funny when we uh were planning the episode. We're like, oh, there probably is a fair bit to talk about with chaos, but yeah, it's been a big big episode and big week, so I guess it was deservingly Needing a long episode yep. with all the yep. games Good old. in. So I welcome yep. that X play. Yep. That's, That's the way we do it. Hopefully people have painted another army in this time. So <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> anyway, have you guys got anything else you want to cover or we'll wrap it up? I think we'll wrap it up. Save some save something for next week, eh? Hey? Yeah. Don't we should... know what we're gonna talk about next week. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Uh, I think I'm going to try and get a, another faction focus out at some point, though. So, like Lizardman or something with Alex. So maybe try that for next week. But nice. Yep. Keep it. Nice. Keep a lookout. Anyway, but thanks for listening to another. Oh, is that? Um, oh. Sorry, is that? Yeah. 
Is it men? Yeah. I am. Do you want to do Chaos Dwarves too? No, no, no. With Alex. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, there's that. And then we've got to do the Arcade Journal when it comes out with Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. No. Nah, so that pro- well, probably, it's well, good. maybe we should try squeeze that in just off our derpy pictures sooner rather than later. Yeah. Because otherwise it's just a waste of time. So. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Anyway, yeah. And uh, anyway, thanks for listening, guys. If you uh, want to give us a five-star review on your podcast software of choice or hit the like, subscribe in YouTube if you're watching us on YouTube. And again, jump over to patreon.com slash oldworldfanatics. Uh, you can find us over there and we'd love to have you on board with the other 40 uh, patrons we've got over there. Um, other than that, hit us up on uh, yeah all the socials or email at oldworldfanatics at gmail.com. And until next time, thanks for listening to another episode of the Old World Fanatics. And Josh, Andrew, I'll see you next episode. Cheers guys. Yep. All right. See you right. Ciao.